It's Black Friday, and it's time for football here on the campus of Northern Illinois. Eastern Michigan has had a tremendous turnaround this year, and with a win today, they've become bowl eligible for the first time since 1995. But the Huskies are a win away from clinching their second straight MAC West Division title behind Chandler Harnish. It's morning football in the MAC next. Welcome to Husky Stadium here in DeKalb, Illinois, for some Mac morning football on this Black Friday as Eastern Michigan takes on Northern Illinois. This is a huge game for both teams because Northern Illinois, with a win here today, clinches the WAC, the MAC West. Now, Eastern Michigan, with a win, becomes bowl eligible for the first time since 1995. And hello to everybody, Justin Kutcher alongside Tom Lugan. Bill and Tom, happy Thanksgiving to you and your family, and happy Thanksgiving to you out there. Hopefully you're up right now, not still sleeping from all that turkey yesterday. Uh, let's talk about this matchup, Tom. It's rare that we get a game this late in the season in the MAC where it's so important for both teams. Well, yeah, and by appearance, you're going to look at Eastern Michigan and Northern Illinois and say, hey, we've got a couple of spread teams here. Quite the contrary. You're going to see the ball on the ground an awful lot from both ball clubs. The question is going to be, can Eastern Michigan keep pace with Northern Illinois that has scored over 40 points in 9 of 11 contests so far this year. Should be a lot of fun to watch on the ground. That offense for Northern Illinois is led by their quarterback Chandler Harnish who has over 1,200 yards rushing and 2,500 passing. Well and he's hoping to become the first ever player to eclipse 3,000 yards passing and 1,500 yards rushing in a single season. You see the athleticism as a designated runner within the offense but don't think that he can't throw the football and throw it well particularly downfield on the deep ball as we showcase his accuracy and then the ability to get off the balance throw across his body make some of those throws you'd like to see on the run but for me the number one thing about Chandler Harness that stands out is the it factor you don't necessarily know how to describe it you can't manufacture it but you know it when you see it and that's what Chandler Harnish has for Northern Illinois you see his numbers this year they are spectacular Eastern Michigan won the toss they deferred so they will kick off Northern Illinois will receive Northern is in the red jerseys and the black pants and Eastern Michigan in all white Mike Yoakum will kick off here for Eastern Michigan Tommy Davis and Tommy Lee Lewis back deep Dangerous return men in this game for both teams. With the win behind him. That ball will go into the end zone for a touchback. And Northern Illinois will start at the 20. So here is Chandler Harnish, the senior 6'2", 220 pounds from Bluffton, Indiana. Yeah, Chandler Harness was really the difference in their come from behind victory last week versus Ball State that's put him in the position here today of a win and they're in scenario for the Mac West division. He can get it done on the ground. He's a deceptively good thrower and you talk to co coaches around the Mid-American Conference. They'll tell you he's the best co quarterback in the conference. Jasmine Hopkins in the backfield Cameron Bell the fullback. On first down Harnish keeps it gets around the corner. Chandler Harnish down the sideline. A flag comes flying in. And Harnish gets up beyond midfield, a 32-yard run. But this one could be coming back. Holding. Offense. Number 32. 10-yard penalty. First down. That's Cameron Bell, the senior fullback. 6'2", 250, you're going to see him right on the right edge of your screen right there, and he gets his hands on the outside. Those officials start seeing Jersey pulled away on numbers 47, Justin Cudworth for Eastern Michigan. Keep your hands inside. You've got much better chance of keeping that block in tight, not getting called for the hold. So now instead of what would have been close to a 40-yard gain, they're backed up minus 10 yards with a repeat of first down, but now 20 to go. First down and 20. Hopkins still in the backfield. Now Luke Ekis. Yes. Hopkins spreads out wide. Harnish rolling to his left. Throws towards the sideline. It's incomplete. Dropped by Martell Moore. 
How about the impact players in this game? Well, I don't think you can talk about impact without mentioning Chandler Harnish and his worth and value to this team from a leadership standpoint. The intangibles that you can't coach, he has them all. And then Martell Moore, the explosive big play threat, particularly vertically down the sideline. He can make a lot of plays. In fact, you're not going to see an 80 catch guy with Northern Illinois. You're going to see a bunch of really good receivers that all contribute more leads to charge. Second down and 20, low snap. Harnish keeps it up the middle. And Chandler Harnish gets up to the 19, a nine yard run. Set of third down and 11, Latarius Thomas with the tackle. How about on the defensive side of the ball? We just mentioned linebacker Justin Cudworth. 78 tackles on the year, four pass breakups. Just got the call against him for holding on Northern Illinois. He's a guy that's the quarterback of this defense for Ron English's ball club. One of the reasons why they've seen a resurgence in Ypsilanti, Michigan with the Eagles. Empty backfield, five receivers in on third and 11. Harnish over the middle, nearly picked off. Colin Weingrad should have had it. It was in his hands. Chandler Harnish trying to sneak this one in tight. You see 35 there. He's sitting and he's right on top of it. He just can't catch the football. Looked like he put up a couple of ping pong paddles. Ball intended for 81, Nathan Palmer. As Weingard, 35, missed an opportunity there, but nevertheless forcing a punt. Ryan Near on to punt. Demarius Reed is back at his own 43-yard line. Punting into the wind. You can see the wind just kill it. And the fair catch is made by Reed. Up at the 48-yard line of Northern Illinois, a 28-yard punt. So here comes Eastern Michigan behind their quarterback, Alex Gillett. Alex Gillett can really run it. He is a focal part of this, uh, focal point of this run game. They are a rushing machine at Eastern Michigan. Everything is about power. It's about controlling the line of scrimmage and dictating tempo on the ground. They want to out-physical you at the point of attack. Dominique White in the backfield. On first down, Gillett to pass. And the pass is complete to number 84, Trey Hunter, Johnny Faustin with a tackle, a five-yard pickup on first down. You see Dominic Shearer, number 25. You look at the rush yards per game, missed five games due to a knee injury. He's back now in the lineup, a 5'9", 205-pound junior out of Cincinnati, Ohio. And Javante Green, another running back. This is a three-headed monster when you consider the quarterback Alex Gillett, along with Green, six touchdowns, leads the team for Eastern Michigan. Second down and five. Gillett again back to pass, taking a chance down the field. Incomplete was looking for Nick Olds. Third down and five coming up. How about the defense for this Northern Illinois team? Well, Sean Progar, the middle linebacker, excuse me, the defensive end that also plays linebacker as well at times, stands up. He's got four and a half sacks. He is a complete football player. Jay Neiman, the defensive coordinator, says there's really nothing he can't do. Rush elements, playing in space, stopping the run. He's got all the components. Javante Green and Dominic Shearer in the backfield on third and five. And the handoff to Shearer, hitting the backfield. Great job by Jordan Delegal. Number 29 for a loss of four. It's a good job by Jordan Delegal, 29, and the front seven for Northern Illinois of keeping contained, breaking down in space. You see a lot of red jerseys running to the football. And Eastern Michigan was really trying to keep Northern Illinois off pace with two consecutive passes to start off this game. That's uncharacteristic of their philosophy. Perez asked for Tommy Davis. Back deep. A high punt, fair catch called. And that will go into the end zone for a touchback. And no score here in the first quarter. Eastern Michigan against Northern Illinois. It's so cool. You can put a force field on them and be invisible. I call first player. No, well, not I already called him. Nobody's him. playing anything until after we get our homework done. Thank you. Hello? Test drive's not over yet. It's practically yours. Hello? But we still need your signature. Right now, during Sign Then Drive, it's never been easier to get the all-new Passat, the 2012 Motor Trend Car of the Year, for practically just your signature. That's the power of German engineering. Visit VWDealer.com. Good for 23 yards. Hey, you went to Jared. 
That's a peerless diamond. The ideal, ideal cut diamond. What? If you want to create your own one-of-a-kind ring, get to Jared this Friday through Monday because you can receive Get Set and Diamonds rewards up to $1,000 toward a beautiful diamond setting when you buy your diamond at Jared. Choose from thousands of diamonds and hundreds of settings. Get up to a $1,000 reward this Friday through Monday at Jared, the Galleria of Jewelry. Imagine me and you, I do. I think about you day and night. It's only right to think about the girl you love and hold her tight. So happy together. When life changes, so can your insurance needs. Use Traveler's free guide to better coverage to stay prepared. Is your auto and home insurance keeping up with you? Contact your local Traveler's agent or call 800-MY-COVERAGE. Exciting doubleheaders from the Big Ten ACC Challenge are on ESPNU. Tuesday at 7.15, Northwestern Georgia Tech followed by Clemson, Iowa. And Wednesday, Penn State, B.C., then Wake Forest, Nebraska on ESPNU. A big game for these two men. The head coach for Northern Illinois, Dave Dorton, his first year. And Ron English in his third year for Eastern Michigan. Two guys who have done a very nice job with their respective programs. Dave Dorn comes in, takes over a senior-laden team, Ooh, ooh. eight and three this year, six and one in the MAC. And then Ron English, the turnaround from when he took over two years ago to now is just remarkable. Akeem Daniels in the backfield. He splits out wide. Empty backfield on first down. And a false start. A couple of guys moved early for Northern Illinois. Ball start, offense, number 68, five-yard penalty, first down. That's Keith Otis, the right tackle. And, Tom, before we talk about this offense, let's talk about what Northern Illinois' defense just did because the offense gets all the recognition for this team, but they just had a short field, and they made a three-and-out stop. Well, they certainly did. They did a great job in pass coverage, not seeing it coming early just because that's not Eastern Michigan's philosophy. Now we'll see if offensively the Husky can get on track. On first down, the handoff to Tommy Lee Lewis. Tommy Lee Lewis has that speed. He gets the first down up to the 35-yard line. A 20-yard run by Tommy Lee Lewis. And now you're seeing Northern Illinois start to pick up the pace a little bit here on offense, going no huddle, getting lined up. Offensive coordinator Matt Canada said this was a bit of an adjustment for this team when he came in, going with the fast pace, no huddle. Now the handoff to Akeem Daniels. And Daniels lowers that shoulder, picks up four yards. Nate Wilson with a tackle. Second down and six. Daniels again, it's Harnish keeping it this time. Harnish gets around, and Harnish picks up. Well, looks like he's got that first down as Latarius Thomas able to make the tackle. We start seeing Northern Illinois set up this keep by Chandler Harnish, the quarterback, off of two consecutive fly sweep plays to the wide receivers, and it's executed nicely. Harnish does a good job. He's a big physical guy. It's 6'2", 220 pounds, so not just quick and agile, but he can lower his shoulder and push the pile a little bit. First and 10, Jasmine Hopkins as a tailback, Cameron Bell as the fullback. It's Cameron Bell on the carry, and Bell will pick up a yard. This is a big game for both teams. With a win here today, Northern Illinois will clinch the MAC West title for the second straight year, advance the championship. Eastern Michigan would become bowl eligible for the first time since 1995. This is a team that just two years ago was 0-12. Jasmine Hopkins back in on second down and nine. Ron English has done a great job. We'll talk about that throughout the broadcast of the blueprint and the philosophy going forward and how he's done it. A timeout taken here by Chandler Harnish. Only 10 men were on the field here for the Huskies. No score. Second and nine coming up here for Northern Illinois.
Will our status this weekend be worth updating? What are the to-dos we'll check off and the prices we'll brag about? There are plenty of reasons to resist the snooze button this weekend. And whether we're online or in the aisles, those reasons can be standing in our kitchens and laundry rooms for years to come. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. Update your laundry status, too. Right now, this washer or dryer is just 549 bucks each. Is this a Chevy Volt? Yeah, it's electric. I don't think so. It's got a gas tank right here. Electric tank, right over here. Electric tank? Really, Stu? Is that where you pour the electricity It's actually in? both, guys. I can plug in and go 35 miles gas-free, or I can fill up and go a whole lot farther. Is that my burger? Oh, I just got bun. I, I didn't even buy any burger. Look. This new AT&T 4G LTE is fast. Mm -hmm. Hey, two tickets just opened up on the 50. Yep, about to go pick them up from Will Call. So 46 seconds ago. Did you guys hear that Chapman rolled his ankle? It's done. Get out there. So 12 seconds ago. Do you guys know how to post videos to Facebook? Do you guys know how to post videos to Facebook? Did you guys hear someone stole the, the other team's mascot? So 27 seconds ago. Stay a step ahead with 4G LTE, with speeds up to 10 times faster than 3G. AT&T. ESPNU College Football is brought to you by the Home Depot. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. Back here on the campus of Northern Illinois, that building right there, affectionately known as the Castle. No score, first quarter. Eastern Michigan and Northern Illinois, 10-24 to go. Second down and nine coming up here for the Huskies. Jasmine Hopkins in the backfield. Chandler Harness throwing over the middle, wide open. Willie Clark all the way to the end zone for the touchdown. Fifty-four yard touchdown pass out of the timeout. When you can effectively run the football, it gives you such options in the passing game because Eastern Michigan has no choice but to devote a lot of bodies to the line of scrimmage. And Colin Weingrad, number 35, he sunk in, bit on the play fake underneath. And Willie Clark goes right down the seam, perfectly executed by quarterback Chandler Harnish, and the Huskies are on the board. Matthew Sims on for the extra point. And the kick is good, 7-0, Northern Illinois. See Willie Clark comes across in the motion, and then he just dips inside as if he's going to block and black back inside, and then jets right down the seam while Eastern Michigan defenders are peeking inside, trying to defend the run. Chandler Harnish, the play-action touchdown pass to Willie Clark, 54 yards. 7-0. You saw Matthew Sims kick the extra point. Matthew Sims is the reason why we are here today in a let it control your own destiny situation for Northern Illinois. Last week playing against Ball State. Game tied at 38. They go on a drive 80 yards. And it's Sims with eight seconds to go hitting the game-winning field goal. That was his first game-winning field goal of his life. Afterwards, Chandler Harness said, I'm glad I didn't know that until afterwards. <laughs> well, he picked the right spot. Keep in mind, Northern Illinois was actually down 31 to 14 late in the third quarter in that ball game versus Ball State. So to be able to come back behind a group of fifth year seniors and a strong leader at quarterback to get that opportunity to make the kick speaks volumes of this Northern Illinois ball club. Tyler Weedle to kick off into the wind, a very short kick. Taken at the 32. Colin Weingrad, the middle linebacker, makes the catch, a two yard return. And now here are the scenarios that can play out here today. With a win or a Toledo loss, Northern Illinois in the MAC West title game. Now, if Toledo wins and NIU loses, it's Toledo going to the title game. And just think of this both Toledo and Northern Illinois each have one loss. Toledo's one loss was to Northern Illinois. Northern Illinois' one loss was to Central Michigan. 
Dominique White in the backfield on first down for Eastern Michigan. White with some confusion on that handoff gets wrapped up in the backfield by Frank Buenzi. A loss of five on the play. Yeah, there's some confusion with Alex Gillett, the quarterback. He comes out the wrong direction and then has to find the back. Took a long time to get that play called at the line and to snap the football dangerously close to getting a delay of game call. And now with this offense at Eastern Michigan, they do not like to find themselves in second and long situations as they're in right now. Second down and 15. Handoff. Dominic White up the middle. He'll pick up a couple yards. Pat Schiller, the middle linebacker, team's leading tackler, makes his first tackle of the game. No, Eastern Michigan has rushed for 2,487 yards and 16 touchdowns. That's the 13th best ground attack in college football this year. So if they get out of their comfort zone and they find themselves in third and long, that does not bode well for Eastern Michigan on offense because that's not their bread and butter. They want to keep it on the ground and control down in distance. Dominique Schur, Javante Green in the backfield. Third and long. Stepping up is Gillett, looking down the field, goes up top, incomplete. Garrett Hoskins, the tight end, tried to go up to make the catch. Ron Newcomb applied the pressure on Alex Gillett. Yeah, Newcomb, 96, he's in Gillett's face. Gillett does a good job of stepping up and throwing a deep ball and giving his guy a chance. I think there was an opportunity for Garrett Hoskins to go up number 85 and catch that ball against the Deshaun Durant, Durant, number 21. Jay Karutz. Takes a good bounce for Eastern Michigan. That ball will be down at the 13-yard line. A 57-yard punt by Karutz. Northern Illinois. And it's explosive offense leading Eastern Michigan 7-0 here in the first quarter. Michigan State, Eastern Michigan at noon, VCU, Alabama at 9.30, Sunday on ESPNU. Insurgents have had fleeing to the countryside. High speed pursuit with him of the time. With a new 285 horsepower Pentastar V6 engine, it's game over for would-be contenders. The 2012 Jeep Wrangler Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 Edition, the toughest vehicle in the world, any world. Tomorrow, at noon, an FCS first round matchup between James Madison and Eastern Kentucky. Then at 3.30, Zach Stacy only needs 48 yards for a thousand yard season, as the Commodores take on Chris Givens and Wake Forest. And at seven, the Egg Bowl between in-state rivals Ole Miss and Mississippi State, as the Rebels look to get Houston Nutt one last win. Touchdown, just like that, the Rebels going for it. Kickoff is at noon tomorrow. College football lives here every day on ESPNU. What do you get when you become a City Thank You Premier Card member? Spend $2,500 and you'll get 50,000 thank you reward points. Points that you can use for airline tickets. And you can fly on any airline, anytime you want, with no blackout dates. I used my thank you points to fly to St. Louis to see my family and still had enough thank you points left for a trip to New York City. You'll also earn points for the miles you fly, so the points add up even quicker. In addition to 50,000 thank you points, you'll also get a companion airline ticket on us right away and another airline ticket every year after that. Become a card member today and get 50,000 thank you points and earn two points for every dollar spent on dining and travel in the first 12 months. Call 800-603-0544 today to apply. We'll waive the annual fee for the first year. There are no point caps, no expiration on points, and no blackout dates. Call 800-603-0544 today for your City Thank You Premier Card or visit city.com slash travel. ESPNU's coverage of college football continues tomorrow afternoon at noon Eastern when James Madison takes on Eastern Kentucky in the first run of the NCAA FCS championship presented by Enterprise Rent-A-Car. College football on ESPNU tomorrow. Looking at the bracket that both Eastern Kentucky and James Madison have to get through and 
Tom, you know a thing or two about Eastern Kentucky, huh? The Mighty Colonels playing at Roy Kidd Stadium tomorrow at noon. They expanded the FCS bracket to 20 teams now, so make it a little more complex to work their way through it. James Madison, now they're, they're kind of the Baltimore Ravens of FCS on defense, so the Colonels will have their hands full at home. A great crowd on hand here on this Friday after Thanksgiving in DeKalb, Illinois. On first down. It's Akeem Daniels getting back to the line of scrimmage. Jabbar Westerman there on the tackle. Now I realize it's early and Northern Illinois wants to try and establish some things inside, but to this point, it's been the two fly sweeps on the perimeter and Chandler Harnish off of the zone read, keeping the football that have gassed the Eastern Michigan defense to this point. So far, Eastern Michigan struggling to handle Northern Illinois speed on the perimeter. Second down and 10, Hopkins in the backfield. Chandler Harnish keeps it. He goes up the middle. Harnish gets the first down. Picks up 12. Latarius Thomas with his third tackle of the game. Looked like Chandler Harness was going to try and pull up to see if he could get the little pop pass down the seam. Didn't like it. Sees a gap in front of him. Then he navigates through some traffic. He's a very savvy runner. He just finds ways to win, gains positive yards. His teammates love him from a leadership standpoint. First and 10, Hopkins still in the backfield. The give is to Hopkins. There's Harnish out blocking <laughs> for him. And Hopkins picks up the first down. And there's a player down for Eastern Michigan. Look at Chandler Harnish, the quarterback, number 12. He's going to hand off, and then he's going to get a head start on Hopkins, a running back. Lays a good low block on number two, Latarius Thomas for Eastern Michigan. As we're trying to identify the it injured Eastern Michigan player down on the field. It looks like it's number 43, Devon Davis. And Davis went down and he's been lying down. Now he's sitting up, which is a great thing to see. Devon Davis, 6'2", 225 pound junior from Columbus, Indiana. And he's holding that left arm. Nice little Black Friday turnout here in DeKalb, Illinois. Well, they came straight from the stores. They did. They came straight from their tents in the parking lot. First and 10, empty backfield here for Northern Illinois. Hopkins in motion. Harnish keeps it. And Harnish, good job holding on to that football. Gets up to the 41-yard line, a pickup of four. Kalanji Kashama with a tackle. I mentioned earlier, <laughs> Jazz Hopkins going in motion there. They hand that ball off. He's on the perimeter, and there was no contain for Eastern Michigan. I got to imagine that Matt Canada, the offensive coordinator at Northern Illinois, sitting up top, and he's going to start seeing some of these perimeter runs open up for big yardage, get their skills people in space. Second down and six. It's Hopkins on the handoff, trying to cut it back. Hopkins will pick up two. Justin Cudworth, number 47, Jabbar Westerman combined for the tackle. Cudworth is a player who held on to the foot of Hopkins, wouldn't let him go. Cudworth is the active player, one of our impact players for Eastern Michigan on defense, the leader of that crew. It's awfully nippy down the stairs, and he's not wearing any type of long sleeve shirt. Got some toughness to him with the linebacker spot, trying to intimidate the Huskies. He's pulling the Tom Lugan bill. Yeah, right. Akeem I'd have Davis. a park out on down there. <laughs> Harnish throwing on third and four, knocked away by Darius Scott, the freshman. Nathan Palmer, the intended receiver. Darius Scott does a great job, just a freshman at 5'8", 155 pounds, working on 81, Nate Palmer. He gets position on him initially and then Wow, Scott does a great job coming underneath with the left left arm on the hip of the receiver and swiping forward with his right hand. Ryan Near on to punt. Demarius Reed back deep at his own 21.
Reed, fair catch. A bobble, able to hold on to it, though, at the 30-yard line. A 27-yard punt into a stiff wind here at Husky Stadium. Ron English in his third year. Look at what he has done. He has more wins in this year than he had the previous two combined. 0-12. 2 and 10, 6 and 5. That is a remarkable turnaround. That's an unbelievable turnaround in Ypsilanti there. And he's done a great job. Uh, and when we asked, and we'll talk about it some more, you know, uh, especially when we asked him about the, what the turning point was for him. Dominique Shearer on the handoff, and Shearer's got nowhere to go. He'll lose a yard. You know, Ron, Michigan, uh, Ron English at Eastern Michigan, when I asked him, what, you know, wh when did you know? Was there a point? where you said, you know what, these guys might be starting to get it. And he said, when we didn't have any missed attendance in the summer, the entire team stayed, weight workouts, summer workouts, and everybody's attendance. Nobody missed. You know, that's when I really knew this group was buying in. Second down and 11. This offense is going backwards, not forward so far. Hand off to Shearer again. And Shearer gets some positive yards this time. Picks up two. Jimmy Ward on the tackle. We are here in DeKalb, Illinois, at Husky Stadium on the campus of Northern Illinois. A Mac morning football contest between Eastern Michigan and Northern Illinois. Northern Illinois with a win, clinches the Mac West Division title for the second straight year. Eastern Michigan with a win becomes bowl eligible for the first time since 1995. Justin Kutcher alongside Tom Luganville. Happy Thanksgiving. Hope you enjoyed your holiday and now watching some football on this Friday. Third down and nine. Gillett drops back, has a step up, forced out of the pocket, on the run, throws, completes to Garrett Hoskins for the first down. All the way up to the 45-yard line of Northern Illinois, a 24-yard completion. Well, that's just a great job by Alex Gillett as he's pressured by number 90, Alan Baxter on the right edge there, and then he dips underneath, keeps both hands on the football to secure the ball in traffic, and throws a strike to 85, Garrett Hoskins, the big tight end. This is just a great job down the slot, settling into the open spot. Knows he's got to come back to his quarterback now a little bit. Fantastic job of moving the chains on third and nine. First eight plays, minus one yard. That play, 24 yards. Shearer, he's going backwards again. Ron Newcomb and Deshaun Durant combined for the tackle, a loss of two on the play. Well, Deshaun Durant, number 21 from his safety position. I think Northern Illinois is doing a great job with their perimeter, perimeter secondary run support players of maintaining, contain, and tackling in space, not allowing any plays to bounce to the perimeter for Eastern Michigan. Another player down here for Eastern Michigan. And that appears to be Garrett Hoskins at tight end who made that third down reception for 24 yards. You saw him kind of hobbling after the catch. They were able to run a play and now he's down getting tended to by the training staff. But Tom, this Eastern Michigan team, you talked about it. They want to establish the run. Four of their six runs so far have gone for negative yards. Yeah, and Northern Illinois is just daring them to throw it. They're lining up eight, and nine guys in the box. They're, they're basically going to say, we're not going to allow you to run the football to beat us at home. You're going to have to throw it and be accurate and be patient in the passing game. And if you're Northern Illinois, you've got to feel terrific about the third and long situations you've put Eastern Michigan in to this point, only one of which they've converted, and that was two plays ago, to Garrett Hoskins, number 85, the tight end, who just got up from being injured on the carpet. Now, Garrett Hoskins, with him going out, he's a main target to throw to. Another guy to look to from the tight end position, number 88, Tyrese Russell. Second down and 12. A handoff again up the middle. Nowhere to go for Dominique White. Picks up a yard. Alan Baxter is right there for his first tackle of the game. Corey Watman, number 70 to the left guard. He's pulling around and he actually bypasses number 90, Alex Baxter. Should have gone ahead and made that uh, block right there on the inside. Third down and 11. Gillette back to pass. Lofts one in the air. 
And it's hauled in by Russell. The tight end who came in for Hoskins makes the big catch. Jimmy Ward finally gets him out of bounds. Well, he does a 42 yard pickup. He doesn't even have time to do any calisthenics. You get Tyrese Russell, 88 on the deep corner route. Then he makes a spectacular behind the back grab over number 15, Jimmy Ward for Northern Illinois, who actually has good coverage. This is just a fantastic job of focus and concentration to bring that ball in. And now Eastern Michigan knocking on the door. First and goal here for the Eagles. The freshman out of Chicago, Illinois, just about an hour away from here in DeKalb. And a timeout taken here by Ron English in Eastern Michigan. First and goal with the ball on the four yard line for the Eagles. ESPN News coverage of college football continues tomorrow with two great games. First, catch the All-State Game of the Week at 3.30 Eastern as Vanderbilt visits Wake Forest. Then at 7 Eastern, in-state rivals Ole Miss and Mississippi State meet in the Egg Bowl. College football on ESPNU tomorrow. Now, this is a big game, that earlier game at 3.30 for Vanderbilt. Big time. The Vandy Commodores under James Franklin. Hoping to become bowl eligible with a win. A tremendous accomplishment that would be in his first year. And then you see Ron English for Eastern Michigan, the head coach, calls timeout here. Keep in mind, you have just over two minutes to go in the first quarter. The wind is howling, howling to the north. And I believe what he's hoping to be able to do here is not only score here, but have enough time to be able to kick off with the wind and then to have the quarter get flipped when Northern Illinois is on offense and put them against the win. Dominique White in the backfield, first and goal from the four. And movement on the line. Dylan Brooks, a tight end. Ball start, offense, number 81, five yard penalty, first down. So now you go from first and goal from the four now to first and goal from the nine here for Eastern Michigan. <laughs> Dominique White's on the backfield. Play action. Gillette rolling out. Throwing across his body to the end zone. Flag comes in incomplete. Intended receiver was Trey Hunter. Johnny Faust in there on the coverage. Pass interference. Defense, number 28. I rule the ball be placed at the two yard line. First down. Johnny Fauston, number 28, the right cornerback. You see a great play fake. He doesn't like, Alex Gillette doesn't like what he sees in the flat, comes back late. Somewhat of a dangerous throw intended for 84, Trey Hunter. And just getting wrapped up with the intended target in the back of the end zone because of fresh set of downs to Eastern Michigan. Dominic White from the two. And Dominic White will pick up a yard. Second and goal coming up from the one. So this is an area that Eastern Michigan should feel very comfortable in and pride themselves in winning this battle because this is the identity of their offense. Lean on those big guys up front, have a downhill physical presence, and pound it right at the teeth of this Northern Illinois defense. Matt Boyden at fullback. White as a tailback. Hand off to White again, stops. Ran into the pile, loses a yard. Jimmy Ward with his fourth tackle of the game. Now, if he could have seen a bit of a cutback early, he might have had a chance to dip into the end zone there, but ended up running into a rubberneck of cars on the highway right there. Just too much of a traffic jam. 
Third and goal from the two. Gillette forced out, asking for a block. He can't get in. Ron Newcomb first to make the stop. They try to come off real quick for the tight end pop pass. Northern Illinois is not biting. They stay disciplined. They stay at home. Then there's nowhere to go with the football for Alex Gillette because it was essentially a one-man route. Now they take the loss and need to get this field goal off with plenty of time here to be able to hopefully ensure that they kick off with the wind and pin back Northern Illinois. Cody Fulkerson off for the 20-yard field goal attempt. And the kick is good with 11 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Again, this Northern Illinois team does the job defensively, facing a first and goal from the two. They do not let Eastern Michigan score. The emotions are running high there on the sideline for Eastern Michigan and head coach Ron English. Trying to fire up the troops, obviously. He wants to come away with a touchdown in that situation. On the road here, though, make sure you get the field position in your favor by ensuring a kickoff with the wind here. Coming away with three points doesn't kill you. Seem to be some confusion on the sideline as the coaching staff, along with Ron English, the head coach, discussing some things coming off of that drive. Mike Yoakum will kick off. Tommy Lee Lewis and Tommy Davis are back deep for Northern Illinois. A 7-3 ball game here in the first quarter. Tommy Lee Lewis, number 80, a very, very dangerous return man. Had two kickoff returns for touchdowns against Toledo earlier this year. And it will be Tommy Lee Lewis from the 10. Tommy Lee Lewis gets wrapped up at the 25-yard line, a return of 15. Corey Manns with the tackle. Anytime you have two kickoff returns for touchdowns in a game and you kick off to him, you kind of hold your breath thinking, is this going to go the distance again? No question. It puts a tremendous amount of pressure on your kickoff coverage units. Tommy Lee Lewis is he's a spark. He can really go he can make people miss in space very decisive doesn't dance back there. Jasmine Hopkins in the backfield. Arnish passes completes to his main target Martel Moore who gets tackled by Marcel Rose a pickup of four and that is the end of this first quarter. Northern Illinois, a trip to the MAC championship game on the line. With a win here today, they go to that game for the second straight year. Willie Clark with a 54-yard touchdown catch. His team on top. Michigan State, Eastern Michigan at noon. VCU, Alabama at 9.30, Sunday on ESPNU. I host a pretty good game, but to be the best, I needed a little coaching. That's where I came in. The world's best party needs the world's most refreshing beer. Stack that Coors Light. Make those mountains blue. Wake up. These are frost proof fundamentals. Work it, work it, hit it. Gee whiz, Kyle. When it comes Whoa. to big refreshment, we could Doing all use it. a little coaching. Now I'm ready to host the playoffs. Playoffs? Don't talk about playoffs. Frost proof Coors Light, the game's most refreshing beer. Are you kidding me? Playoffs? Now it's time for a one of a kind part. First Century Insurance here with the, I think, our fastest way yet to prove that you can save hundreds of dollars just by switching your car insurance. You start with two identical cars, one covered by a leading insurance provider, the other covered by 21st Century. Both cars have the same damage, but here's the fun part. 
You see, they both have the same coverage, so they both get the same fast, hassle-free repairs. Although, I have to confess, I've never seen my mechanic move like that. And done. Same car, same damage, same repairs, but drivers who switch from GEICO to 21st don't pay the same premiums. No, they save an average of $492 a year. And drivers who switch from Progressive, they save even more. Call 888-GET-2121. That's 888-GET-2121. Or try us online at 21st.com. 21st Century Auto Insurance. The same great coverage for less. I'm going to grab some more munchies. Be back in a sec. Cool. What's up, Clay Matthews? You want a piece of me? This ain't over, punk! Whoa, I see you met my Clay Matthews fathead. Real. Big. Fathead. Get yours at fathead.com. Well, ESPNU is in over 75 million homes and now on dogs everywhere here in DeKalb, Illinois. That's Diesel. Diesel the Husky dog. Look at him. That's awesome. Got his pride in the MAC, which we're now calling the Morning American Conference. Hopkins in motion. Harnish rolling to his right, throws on the run, completes the pass to Martel Moore, gets forward across the 40 for the first down, an 11 yard pickup. Nate Wilson on the tackle. Number one, Martel Moore, 6'1, 180 pound junior. And a good job making the first defender miss. And then extending the play. First and 10 here for the Huskies. Hopkins on the handoff. That burst of speed gets up to the 47 yard line. Pick up a five. Latarius Thomas has been busy. He's got four tackles now. The free safety for Eastern Michigan. Northern Illinois picking up the pace here once again, kind of changing the tempo from series to series. And Wind is now at their back. Harness running the option. He keeps it, cuts it back up the middle, and picks up a yard. Andy Malumbo is right there for the tackle. Malumbo, a guy who came in as a linebacker, now playing a defensive end. His coach says he's getting better every day. Third and four coming up here for Northern Illinois. Empty backfield, five receivers in. Harnish forced out of the pocket, scrambling around. Harnish gets wrapped up for a loss of four. Jabbar Westerman with the tackle. Right now, the Eastern Michigan defensive secondary deserves a ton of credit for staying at home, staying on their guys, not getting caught peeking in the backfield, being aware of the situation. You got a scrambling quarterback. You know that going in. You stick to your guns. Phil Snow, the defensive coordinator, has got to be awfully proud of his troops on that play. Third and down, forcing a punt. Secondary deserves kudos. Ryan Neer on to punt. Demarius Reed back deep. And now the pressure coming up, and they take him down. Javante Green came right up there. Javante Green comes up there, and this was just a matter of the inability for Ryan Neer to think he could get the ball off. Alex Belfi. Was well, the one who got to him, number 33. It's just an error in execution up front in the putt protect unit for Northern Illinois. And now for the second series in a row, we find Eastern Michigan in favorable field position to start off the series, only this time with that gust of wind right in their face. First and 10. Ball is the 33 yard line of Northern Illinois. Hand off to Dominique White. White finally has a little bit of running room. 
Dominique White will pick up six. Jimmy Ward with his fifth tackle of the game. Now this is much more of a comfort zone as far as having a second and minus four of what Eastern Michigan wants to be in. This fits their identity, gives them more options within their offense. Matt Borden as a fullback. Play action. Gillette pressured. Throws it up and out of bounds. Wise decision by the junior quarterback. Sean Progar applying the pressure against Gillette. Sean Progar, number 95, is all over the place for Northern Illinois up front, wreaking havoc. Off of the edge, you see him doing a great job with the wide stance, maintains contain, really forces Alex Gillette to have no other choice but to throw this ball away. But now you live to fight another day on third and four for Eastern Michigan. They've got to capitalize on this favorable field position. Empty backfield on third and four. Gillette throwing into the wind, incomplete, was looking for Javante Green. This should be a 44-yard field goal into the wind. You kind of think they're going to go for it here on fourth and four. That's a long field goal into this win. I think it is a long field goal. And to be honest with you, they had the look they wanted there. Alex Gillette just rushed the football a little bit, threw it high. He had an open receiver on the underneath hitch route. And I don't know if Eastern Michigan has any other choice, Justin, as you mentioned here, but to go for it. And Northern Illinois' defense has already come up with a couple of big stops. This would be another one. The fans get to their feet. Green and Shearer in the backfield. Gillette down the sideline, and his receiver stopped his route, Nick Olds. Northern Illinois' defense does the job again. 7-3, to three, a turnover of downs. Northern Illinois with the ball when we come back. Bread pudding, French toast, pumpkin pancakes, all part of Denny's Build Your Own Holiday Slam. Jingle all the way. Heads up, Dave. Get your friends. Heads up, Jim. Infinity Limited Engagement Winter Event. Right now, lease an Infinity G sedan for only $2.99 a month. I'm serious. We compare our direct rates side by side to find you a great deal, even if it's not with us. Oh, that's helpful. Well, our company does that too. Actually, we invented that. It's like a sauna in here helping you save even if it's not with us now that's progressive call or click today no mas pantalones this is the new dremel sawmax the versatile tool system that gives you the ability to make all your common cuts with confidence easily cut through everyday materials like wood drywall plastic plywood and more with an unparalleled view of the task at hand the Sawmax even makes quick work of tough materials, all with the ease of single-handed operation. Check out the Dremel Sawmax wherever power tools are sold, or visit Dremel.com for a free project DVD. Cut with confidence. Cut with the Dremel Sawmax. It's time to give Jay Neiman, the defensive coordinator, in his defense some love for Northern Illinois because the offense gets all the recognition, but that's three big stops that Northern Illinois defense has come up with in this game. Yeah, and again, we're talking about an offense for Eastern Michigan. Again, 13th ranked rush offense in the country, almost 2,500 yards on the season coming in. They've essentially shut down the Eagles to this point. 11 carries for a loss of one yard. On first down, the pass to Martell Moore. And Moore takes a hit, gets up to the 31, picks up four yards. Justin Cudworth with a tackle. We better bring your big boy pads on offense for Northern Illinois because Eastern Michigan is running to the football and laying the hat. Second down and six. Har 
Harness keeps it on the zone read. And Harness very close to that first down marker. And it will be a first down as Colin Weingrad there for the stop. You know, most offenses with an athletic quarterback, they want to have a quarterback that can run, but not necessarily one that's your designated runner. But in this offense, Northern Illinois is going to use Chandler Harnish in any way they can to help them win. If that makes him the feature runner, so be it. First and 10, Hopkins still in the backfield. Harnish fakes the pass, now just throws it out of bounds. Shows off his arm strength. Colin Weingrad applying the pressure. It's a smart play by the redshirt senior quarterback to get that ball out of his hand. Don't take negative plays. There's nothing wrong with living to play the next down, as long as you don't go backwards. This is senior morning here in DeKalb, <laughs> Not Illinois. senior night. No. Senior not, morning. Not senior day, not senior night, but senior morning. 19 seniors, 13 of them are fifth-year seniors. On second and 10, the handoff to Hopkins, tries to cut it back and does. Then he takes a hit as he gets up to the 40 and across the 40 for a pickup of two. Latarius Thomas with his fifth tackle of the day. Chandler Harness coming out, saluting the fans. And the best part was his teammates started saluting him. They were bowing down to him for the career that he has had here at Northern Illinois. Been a spectacular run for him and his teammates. They've really, they began the resurgence of this program. Third and seven, Harnish design run up the middle. Slips as he tried to cut it back up to the 44 yard line. Brian Polly there for the tackle. So on comes Ryan Near for the punt, but you look at the career records that Harnish has set. He owns basically every major record a quarterback can hold here at Northern Illinois. Look at the total touchdowns, just the overall efficiency in any way, shape, or form, finding ways to get it done. Ryan Near on to punt. Demarius Reed back deep at his own 10. Near gets this punt away, and it's a good one. This will be down at the one yard line. A 54 yard putt by Ryan Near. <laughs> Daron Brown. Daron Brown there to down it. Long field coming up here for Eastern Michigan when we come back. Here's to the pursuit. The pursuit of better, faster, cleaner, funner. Here's to the pursuit of a Pennzoil motor oil so advanced, Elio uses it straight from the bottle in his IndyCar. Here's to the pursuit of another 100 years of earning America's trust. Not just oil, Pennzoil. Let's ring you up. Mary, what are you doing here? It's Megan. I'm getting new insurance. Marjorie, you've had a policy with us for three years. It's been five years. Five years. Well, Progressive gives Megan discounts that you guys didn't. Paperless, safe driver, and I get great service. <laughs> Meredith, what's shaking bacon? They'll figure it out. <laughs> getting you the discounts you deserve. Now that's Progressive. Call or click today. Hey, ladies. Ah. Enjoying the film? Of course not. Because this is our movie! And Dr. Pepper 10 is our soda. It's only 10 manly calories, but with all 23 flavors of Dr. Pepper. It's what guys want, like this. Catchphrase. So you can keep the romantic comedies and lady drinks. We're good. Dr. Pepper 10, it's not for women. ESPN College Football is streaming live on your computer, tablet, or smartphone via WatchESPN.com and the Watch ESPN app. One of the best apps for the iPod, iPad, smartphone, 7-3. Northern Illinois leading Eastern Michigan. A long field coming up here for Eastern Michigan. 
starting at their own one, and they have not been able to run the ball well. No, six of their 11 rushes have resulted in negative yardage. So it'll be very interesting to see what happens here on this opening play. Dominic White in the backfield. We haven't seen Gillette really run the, run the ball too much. Handoff is to White. White, second effort, gets out of the end zone. Woo! Victor Jacques nearly had the safety. The chums in the water and the sharks are circling in northern Illinois right now is sniffing a safety. They realize they've got Eastern Michigan backed up. They can penetrate playing on their side of the line of scrimmage. What a great effort to ward off number 40 Victor Jaquez to just get past the goal line right there. Wouldn't be surprised to see maybe a little one on one play action pass right here. Try and get themselves out of this hole. Dominique Shearer now in the backfield. And off to Shearer, and Shearer gets stuffed. And it is a safety. Sean Progar. We've talked about Progar all morning long and how disruptive he has been from his end spot, but it's the entire defensive unit for Northern Illinois. Jay Neiman and his front seven loading up the box. They could sniff him. He's gonna be right on here. Take a look at number 95. Progar's gonna come off. He's gonna scrape inside. He makes a great play, wraps up tackles, while a host of Huskies help him corral the back backfield. And what a tremendous opportunity. Keep in mind, let's go back. Leading to that series, Northern Illinois, when they were punting into the wind, had a combined 55 yards in punting. That punt that went with the wind that put Eastern Michigan back was 54 yards on its own merit. That was the longest punt of the year for Ryan Neer, the punter at Northern Illinois. So now 9-3, to three, Northern Illinois leading Eastern Michigan. And Jay Karutz will punt into the wind again. Perez Ashford, Tommy Davis are back deep, and frankly, they're back very deep right now. And now Ashford comes back up to around the 20-yard line. Now they're moving up even more. <laughs> they're going to move up a whole lot. I would almost go towards the 30. Well, they're going to be approaching that mark, and I would be surprised. Yeah, here come the up backs in Northern Illinois, starting to move up closer to midfield, so you don't have that big gaping hole in the middle. Jay Karutz, the high punt. It's Ashford at the 37. Ashford takes it up to the 48-yard line. 11-yard return. Corey Manns there on the tackle. So now good field position here for Northern Illinois. Well, it's all about field position. The kicking game provides you opportunities. Now we've seen them back up Eastern Michigan, which put the defense for Northern Illinois along field. They get the safety. Now they get the return of the punt from the free kick, and they're sitting here at almost midfield once again. This is tremendous opportunity for Northern Illinois to really take control of this game here in the first half. Akeem Daniels in the backfield to start on this drive for Northern Illinois. On first down, the handoff is to Daniels. Daniels trying to turn up field. Picks up a couple of yards. We'll set up second down and eight. We are here at Husky Stadium in DeKalb, Illinois. College football here in the MAC, Eastern Michigan against Northern Illinois. Justin Kutcher alongside Tom Luganville. A game with great significance, a win by Northern Illinois, and they win the MAC West Division title. A win by Eastern Michigan, and they become bowl eligible for the first time since 1995. Two years removed from an 0-12 season. Harness, play action, drops back, comes near side. Willie Clark down the sideline, picks up the first down. Ryan Pauley on the tackle. A 16-yard completion to Willie Clark, who earlier had that 54-yard reception for a touchdown. Well, great job of Chan the Harness working through his progressions, not forcing the ball downfield, checking off down to number 10, Willie Clark, and now this offense really is rolling. First down and 10. Harnish 
throwing, had a man open, misses Nathan Palmer, throws short. Thought well, about the option, then saw the opening on the on the receiver. Well, they were trying to get the appearance that they were gonna come play the option and then pitch the reverse back to the other side. All the while, the entire intention was for Chandler Harnish to throw the football down the scene to Palmer. Again, you see this soft throw. If he just throws that thing up, lost it a little bit and allows Palmer to run underneath it, it's an easy touchdown. Harnish would love to have that one back. Second and 10. It's Harnish keeping it up the middle. Takes a hit from Latarius Thomas. Sixth tackle of the game for the free safety, but a seven yard run by Harnish. Latarius Thomas. A medical redshirt got the extra year. He's a senior, 210 pounds. Third down and three coming up. Third down conversions, one of the best in college football, but 0 for 4 today. Handoff, Hopkins up the middle. Hopkins gets stuffed. At the 25-yard line, does not get the first down. Latarius Thomas and Willie Williams, the two safeties there for the stop. And now a player is down once again for Eastern Michigan. It is number two, Latarius Thomas, the free safety who made the initial big hit. Well, somebody off of that collision, whether it was Thomas Williams for the back for Northern Illinois, there was some pads popping and some helmets clacking down there. Fourth and one coming up. Let's take a look at this hit. Jazz Hopkins running into a wall. The big green wall, not the one in Boston. Good to see Latarius Thomas come off the field. He's got seven tackles in this game. A problem that had played Eastern Michigan the last couple years was stingers. And they changed their strength and conditioning program in the offseason. And they haven't had the stingers they've had in the past. The guys have gotten much stronger, working on the shoulders, the back, everything to try to eliminate those. Yeah, once Ron English, the head coach, made a change to the sports performance end of, of their program, they started seeing better health, strength gains, weight gains, fewer injuries and dings, and it's really helped them survive the season and get to the point they're at now. Fourth and one, going for it with the win. Harnish keeps it, and Harnish gets the first down. That's a luxury when you have a quarterback like Chandler Harnish on fourth and one, picks up six. Well, I always say I think people get it incorrect when they say, well, you got to be able to run it when you have to. No, you don't. You want to be able to run it when you want to. If you can decide that you're going to line up and say, hey, we want to run it right now and you can't stop us, that's when you're truly in control of the game. Chandler Harness, what are you going to do? You're going to give it to your best overall player on fourth down? Absolutely. Matt Canada, the offensive coordinator at Northern Illinois, knows exactly who to go to in that situation. 54 yards on the ground on 10 carries for Chandler Harness. Look at the discrepancy there in total yards. First down, Harness completes to Martel Moore, who then fumbles it out of bounds. Marcel Rose on the hit, a one-yard pickup. And Marcel Rose, 47, Justin Cudworth. Again, just the short underneath throws, and Marcel Rose puts his hat right on the ball, fortunately pops it out, and the sideline ends up becoming Martel Moore. That man right there is best friend. <laughs> Akeem Daniels in the backfield here for Northern Illinois. Harnish, dangerous pass. And it is hauled in by Perez Ashford, but a loss of three. Yeah, Brian Polly, I think, 21 there, sniffing it out for Eastern Michigan on defense from his linebacker spot. They tried to set up the double screen to the back into the boundary. The wide receiver here to the field, you see in the slot, he's going to bubble out and then come back underneath. 21, Polly does a great job retracing his steps and making the play for a third and long now. Third and 13, empty backfield. Eight, 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 
Ninth play of the drive. Harnish throws, and again, good defense by Eastern Michigan. Brian Pauley stepping up as the pass was intended for Nathan Palmer. You've got to be proud of your defense if you're Ron English and defensive coordinator Phil Snow. After giving up field position like that off of the free kick from the safety, put your defense on a short field and they answered the toll. Matthew Sims on for the 39-yard field goal attempt. The wind is at his back. And the kick is good. So off the safety, Northern Illinois gets three more points. They lead by nine over Eastern Michigan. The Big Ten ACC Challenge, Tuesday and Wednesday on ESPNU. As my Yo, I'm on my way. Experience your sound like never before. The HTC Resound with Beats Audio built in. Let the pros at Best Buy hook you up today. You put a lot of effort into creating the perfect evening. So we put a lot of effort into creating the perfect tortilla chip. Introducing Tostitos Artisan Recipes. Made with real ingredients cooked right in, a flavor you can see and taste in every bite. Because when we put in the very best, what you end up with only gets better. Experience Tostitos Artisan Recipes. What do you get when you become a City Thank You Premier Card member? 50,000 thank you points when you spend $2,500. That's right, 50,000 thank you reward points. But what can you get with those 50,000 points? I got this amazing flat screen TV. For only 41,000 points, I got a kayak for weekends at the lake. We used our points to get $500 in gift cards for our nephews. In addition to 50,000 thank you points, you also get a companion airline ticket on us right away. And another airline ticket every year after that. Call 800-601-8823 now. Become a card member and earn 50,000 thank you points and airline tickets. And you'll also get our 0% introductory APR offer. Plus, no annual fee for the first year. There are no point caps, no expiration on points, and no blackout dates. Call 800-601-8823 today for your City Thank You Premier Card. Or visit city.com slash rewards. Northern Illinois, a team that has scored 40 points in nine of its 11 games, leads Eastern Michigan 12 to three, but it's Eastern Michigan with missed opportunities. Yeah, neither end zone's been overly friendly to the Eagles as they get stuffed here, try and go for it, and are unable to come away with a touchdown early in the first quarter, and then backed up off of the 54-yard punt by Northern Illinois, and the safety by Sean Progar, the defensive end. For Northern Illinois, you look at the last three drives for Eastern Michigan and the missed opportunities, but credit their defense because they have hung in there as best they can under these circumstances while the offense has struggled to put together any type of consistent production. Tyler Weedle will kick off. Corey Welch and Darius Scott are back deep for Eastern Michigan. Back into the end zone, Scott will take a knee, and we will throw it back to Dari Noka in studio for an update. What's coming up at the half, Dari? Well, Justin, how about Houston and Tulsa? This is maybe a four-hour game just beginning in Tulsa, but an opportunity perhaps for an undefeated to go down. We will update that. Trevor Maddich will join us from Baton Rouge just outside the stadium where LSU will take on Arkansas today, and Louisville, South Florida Cardinals can clinch at least a share of a title with a win, guys. That game sounds more like a game that should be played in the MAC. Oh, I know my man Dari's been calling the Tulsa upset. Now I'm actually with him. I think that may happen today. He's been he's been beating that drum for for a good ten days now. 
Dominique Shearer in on first down, the handoff, and Shearer finally gets some positive yards on the ground, picks up 11 in the first down. They had negative two yards on the ground prior to that run. And finally getting off to a good start, and more importantly, just getting out from being backed up a little bit into their own territory. Been struggling in the second quarter to gain any type of field position advantage for Eastern Michigan's offense. I mean, look at what this Northern Illinois defense has done against the rushing attack of Eastern Michigan. Again, it's Shearer trying to get to the outside, and Shearer will pick up a yard. Johnny Faustin with his second tackle of the game. You know, the other thing I've noticed about Eastern Michigan, I don't know if they have any playmakers on the perimeter right now that truly scare Northern Illinois in the passing game. And so Northern Illinois is going to be far more prone to load up that box and dare Eastern Michigan to, to throw it to beat them because I don't think they feel like there are weapons that can just run right by them and create big plays. Second down and nine. Hand off to Shearer again, tries to cut it back, runs into a whole lot of red jerseys. Back to the line of scrimmage, Victor Jacques, Pat Schiller combined for the tackle. Again, Eastern Michigan now backed up out of their comfort zone in a third and long situation. When you're not a team that's throwing it all over the lot, this can put some pressure on you, and then all of a sudden, Eastern Michigan starts pinning their ears back and coming after you in these types of situations. I think that Northern Illinois, Justin, is, is starting to gain some momentum, gain some confidence, get a little excited on defense for potentially making a big play. Third and nine. Gillette has to step up, pressured, escapes on the run, throws, and he completes the pass to Dominic Shearer. A first down again on third and long picks up 14. Well, Alan Baxter, number 90, number 95, Sean Progar, do the job off of the edge. They force the movement, miss the tackle on Alex Gillette. Gillette escapes, makes a nice throw along the sideline. And look at the pressure in the pocket. Both hands on the football for Alex Gillette. Very smart. Don't allow that ball to get swiped away for a turnover and then converts. Play action. Gillette rolling out, looking to go somewhere, cuts it back. And Gillette gets dragged down at the 49-yard line, a pickup of three. Jordan Delegal with the tackle. One of the things that we haven't seen, again, Alan Baxter, number 90, on the pressure again, and another injured player down. Looks like 95, Sean Pro 96, excuse me, Ron Newcomb, the defensive tackle. Big 6'3", 280 pounds senior. But one of the things we haven't seen, Justin, that we certainly thought we'd see an awful lot of is Alex Gillette as a designated runner in this offense coming into the game. Yeah, I mean, talking to the coaching staff, they said this guy runs like a running back. We haven't seen any really designed runs for him. No, we really haven't. Only had two carries for two total yards here in this first half. Coming up on two minutes to go. Dominic White in the backfield on second and seven. Hand off to White. And White gets up to the 49 of Northern Illinois. Jordan Delegal there for the tackle again. A pickup of two for White. So third down and five coming up here for the Eastern Michigan Eagles. Somewhat more manageable now the situation is on third down. Hey, they've been good on third down conversions, especially when Gillette gets out of the pocket. Gillette quickly out to Green, and that is an incomplete pass. I think Alex Gillette just rushed this football a little bit. He's getting back, getting set, and doesn't have his feet set. He's off balance, kind of drifting away from the line of scrimmage when he makes that throw awfully difficult for a right-hander to throw to his left when he doesn't have his feet set. Jay Karutz on to punt. Perez Ashford and Tommy Davis are back deep. Again, this is punting into the wind. Karutz tried to keep it lower. 
And a fair catch is taken by Tommy Davis at the 26 yard line. 12 to 3. Northern Illinois leads Eastern Michigan here in the first half. Taco Bell's epic new triple steak stack. Hey. That's my steak. Our greatest masterpiece yet. Triple the juicy, triple the tender, triple the all-new steak. The new triple steak stack, now at Taco Bell. Lose the grime. Get touch of your clean hair with Axe Shampoo and get some hair action. Good for 23 yards. Hey, you went to Jared. That's a peerless diamond. The ideal, ideal cut diamond. What? If you want to create your own one-of-a-kind ring, get to Jared this Friday through Monday because you can receive Get Set and Diamonds rewards up to $1,000 toward a beautiful diamond setting when you buy your diamond at Jared. Choose from thousands of diamonds and hundreds of settings. Get up to a $1,000 reward this Friday through Monday at Jared, the Galleria of Jewelry. Imagine me and you, I do I think about you day and night It's only right to think about the girl you love And hold her tight, so happy together When life changes, so can your insurance needs Use Traveler's free guide to better coverage to stay prepared Is your auto and home insurance keeping up with you? Contact your local Traveler's agent or call 800-MY-COVERAGE <laughs> The Mid-American Conference, a model for college athletics. Feast Week, presented by Lowe's, continues later today with two games here on ESPNU. First at 2.30 Eastern, Texas Tech takes on DePaul. And from the Old Spice Classic in Orlando, that's from the Old Spice Classic in Orlando. At 5 Eastern, it's BC against UC Riverside in the 76 Classic in Anaheim, California. Feast Week, presented by Lowe's on ESPNU today. 1-12 to go here in the first half. Nine-point lead for Northern Illinois. Chandler Harnish on first down, keeps it himself, goes up the middle, up to the 24, picks up three, tackled by Brad Orman. And Tom, uh, what do we know? But we came in thinking we're going to see a whole lot of offense. And yeah, not really. It's 12 to 3 in this game with a lot at stake for both teams. Northern Illinois with a win, wins the MAC West, goes to the championship, and of course, Eastern Michigan with a win, becomes bowl eligible for the first time since 1995. Well, and that speaks volumes of the job Eastern Michigan and head coach Ron English has done to get this program back and competitive. They're not there yet. Ball start. Offense, number 62 by rule. This penalty includes a 10-second runoff. Please set the game clock to 38 seconds. That's against Trevor Olson, the left tackle, who is making his 52nd career start, which is a school record. First team all MAC performer last year. See Northern Illinois, who I would assume would be more than happy to continue to run this football, keep it inside the numbers, go right into the locker room. The clock continues to run. Play clock down to eight. Harnish will just take a knee. A good crowd on hand here at Husky Stadium. They want to see their Huskies win this game and win the MAC West Division title for the second straight year. They thought they'd see a whole lot of offense in this first half. We saw just one touchdown, a 54-yard pass to Willie Clark. It's 12 to 3 at the half. Northern Illinois leading Eastern Michigan. Now let's go to Darian Noka in the studio for the halftime report. Darian company. Well, happy Thanksgiving, guys. 
You as well. Justin, Tom Lugan, Bill, we'll get you back out your way in just a little bit. Company today would be Jason Seahorn hanging out here with us on the Sports Center U set. So, good start here for Northern Illinois. They win this game, they win the West, they play Ohio in the MAC championship game. What do we take away from the first half of this one? I think the fact that Eastern Michigan really has no answer for Chandler Harnish. I mean, what he's been able to do, throwing the ball, running the football, he's basically inflicted his will upon this offense, and that's what's carrying them so far in the first half. They're going to have to find a way to slow him down in the second half. All right, so we take a look at the MAC standings right now. Again, Ohio has won the East. Northern Illinois and Toledo tied right now at 6-1. and one. Now, Northern Illinois beat Toledo head-to-head, to head, so that's why a win by Northern Illinois today in the game we are watching now would clinch the MAC West Championship. Elsewhere around the MAC, Temple and Kent State scoreless, Bowling Green, Buffalo scoreless. Those two games just in the first quarter right now. Akron and Western Michigan play a little bit later. It's so good, it's flashing. Meanwhile, to the Big East, game underway, Louisville and South Florida. If Louisville wins, they win at least a share of a complicated. Oh, there Big are East. so many ifs in this conference. <laughs> If it was a real conference, no. Oh, I, I don't know that you're kidding. Victor Mark fumbles Sonoris Perry there with the recovery on the muff. So Louisville takes over at the 34. They did nothing with it. Meanwhile, third and three, Teddy Bridgewater, true freshman. Find somebody. Louisville has to punt. Or really field goal. It was 3 0. And then Bobby Evel. Found Lindsay somebody. Lamar. We found somebody. 7 3, South Florida. Demetrius Murray then from a yard out. So now the Bulls starting to pull away at home. They need this win, Jason Seahorn, for bowl eligibility. But after that touchdown, Sonoris Perry. Should I go? Should I not go? I would go. He's going to go. He is going to go. There he goes. 54 yards. Eventually run out of bounds. And then the freshman, Teddy Bridgewater to DeMonte Parker. Touchdown. Bridgewater is a good young quarterback, Jason. Yeah, right about now, these two teams are just further muddling this process. So this is what we're looking at. Louisville wins today, which they're down 17-10. They clinch at least a share of the conference title. If Rutgers beats Connecticut tomorrow on ESPN2 noon Eastern, they clinch a share of the conference title. You will not have a Big East BCS Bowl representative out of this weekend. That's what we know. As you can see, everybody all the way down to Connecticut can still win at least a share of the title. Remarkable. Clear, right? Perfectly. You call that remarkable? Crystal clear? Remarkable. Somebody has to win it. All right, Case Keenum and Houston underway against Tulsa. One of the two lone unbeatens. Mm, struggling in the early going. Northern Illinois, who'd you say? How about a little Chandler Harnish? 12-3 Huskies at the half over Eastern Michigan. We're back in a moment. Now it's time for a one of a kind part. Let's go to Vegas. Yeah, well, let's do it. <laughs> let's do it. Let's go to Vegas. <laughs> Vegas, baby. But, uh, maybe we should uh, head back to the dealership first. Uh, Vegas. It, no, this is a test drive. Vegas. It's practically yours, but we still need your signature. Volkswagen Sign and Drive is back, and it's never been easier to get a Jetta. That's the power of German engineering. Get zero first month's payment, zero down, zero security deposit, and zero do-it signing on any new Volkswagen. Visit VWDealer.com. Illustrated's exclusive championship package. You'll get this must-have official 2011 World Series DVD, 
plus this limited edition hardcover book. Relive the Cardinals' postseason heroics with MLB Productions' amazing video and SI's famous writing and photography. Go to SIOffer.com or call now to get both free with a paid subscription. 56 issues for only $1.59 an issue. Save 65% off the cover price. Use your credit or debit card and get this officially licensed championship baseball honoring the St. Louis Cardinals. Designed exclusively for SI, it features the World Series and team logos, plus a special display cue. Don't miss this terrific offer. Go to SIOffer.com or call now to get the official DVD, the commemorative book, and the collectible baseball. This incredible package is all free and only available from Sports Illustrated. Call or go online now. Jason Seahorn, Dari Noka back with you at the half. They are underway in Lincoln. The first intra-conference matchup between Iowa and Nebraska. Legends division rivals. Sort of a rivalry now, but you would expect that to grow over the years as they are border neighbors. 0-0 zero, zero to Iowa and Nebraska. Let's show you what's going on here. Houston and Tulsa. Houston, one of the last remaining unbeatens. The only teams Tulsa has lost to, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, Boise State. That's all. That's it, right? Winner wins the Conference USA West. G.J. Kenny to Willie Carter touchdown. Expect a lot of offense today. <laughs> you are not kidding. Moments ago, moments ago, great run by Tyron Carrier. 7-6, it's called a touchdown. I mean, you saw the phenomenal attempt to get into that end zone. But they're looking at it to see if he actually got into the end zone. It's pretty good. You think so? Here it is. I'm watching it. I like it. Uh, we're watching it, and it is really, really good. Cool. That's in. That looks like That's it. in. All right, we'll, we'll update it. Meanwhile, Arkansas LSU, our man Trevor Maddich joins us from Baton Rouge. Key to a hog win. Key to a tiger win. And his official prediction coming up. And look at this Eastern Michigan. Wow, what a catch. They're still down 12-3. Halftime resumes. Halftime. Northern Illinois from DeKalb, Illinois, up 12-3 over Eastern Michigan in the Mid-American Conference. And what a year it has been in the MAC. Exciting fireworks on offense all year long. In a conference historically dominated by outstanding quarterback play with the likes of Chad Pennington, Bruce Radkowski, Byron Leftwich, Ben Roethlisberger, and Dan LaFever at Central Michigan, the 2011 version of the Mid-American Conference has become the NCAA's version of the Arena Football League now more than ever before. Scoring touchdowns is expected on each drive. Record-breaking games and offensive fireworks that keep even the best and brightest defensive coordinators up all night. With 129 combined points. Over 1,400 total yards of offense. 18 touchdowns. And a staggering 183 plays in a single game. Are you kidding me? And since when did scoring 63 points not guarantee you a win? With 500 yard passing performances, 40 completions in a single game, 37 first downs in a single game, and seven touchdowns, that has become the norm, not the exception in this league. If records were made to be broken, 2011 is the year of the map. Alex Carter. Chandler Harnish, Ryan Radcliffe, Zach Dysart, Terrence Owens continue to leave their mark on this quarterback-driven league. In a year when number one LSU needed overtime to score nine points against number two Alabama, the old adage defense wins championships does not apply here. The recent offensive explosion in the Mid-American Conference makes it must-see TV each week. So don't blink, keep your head on a swivel, because you never know what you'll miss. And it has indeed been quite a season here in the MAC. And Tom, you and I were at that 66-63 game. <laughs> Unbelievable. 
I mean, but just think about what Northern Illinois did last week. They put up over 700 yards of offense. Yeah, they've really been killing it all year long. The bounce, run to pass. And really, we talk about this being a quarterback-driven league. It is, year in and year out. The teams with the top quarterbacks seem to thrive. And Chandler Harness for Northern Illinois has really been the, the linchpin for this offense and for the league as Northern Illinois tries to get to their third straight MAC Division Championship. Now, with all that said, this game here, it's 12 to 3. <laughs> So all that offense goes out the window because we haven't seen much offense in this game. Well, we've seen attempts at running the football. Both teams playing very well defensively. You take a look at the first half stats. You just can't run the football at will as both teams expected to be able to do. You look at the first half numbers, the rush yards, just 15 rushing yards for Eastern Michigan who had come into this game with almost 2,500 yards on the ground for the season. And look at the yards per play. Obviously, Northern Illinois has a significant advantage there as they kick off to Eastern Michigan to start off the third quarter. Tyler Weedle will kick off. Corey Welch, Darius Scott are back deep for Eastern Michigan. Northern Illinois kicks with the wind at their back for the third quarter, but it was Eastern Michigan who won, deferred the, the coin toss, and so now they'll have the win at their back for the fourth quarter, which could prove to be monumental in this game a touchback and now here comes Eastern Michigan we'll see if they can do anything offensively the only time we saw them move the ball with any type of success was on third down they've been very successful on third down and there have been quite a few third and longs the question for me is will Eastern Michigan have any wrinkles in the second half here on offense that involve big plays in the passing game. They've struggled to run the football effectively. We haven't seen their quarterback, Alex Gillette, be involved in the run game much for offensive coordinator Ken Karcher. So I think it's going to come down to making some plays in the passing game. Dominic White, Dominic Shearer in on first down. It's Gillette running a design run for the quarterback. The first time we've seen that in this game, Michael Santa Catarina with a tackle, a pickup of four. And this may be part of their halftime adjustments of creating more of a threat for Northern Illinois to have to defend the quarterback running the football, which they did not have to do in the first half. Again, does Eastern Michigan, as you take a look at the quarterback comparison here, have enough answers outside of running the game to be able to keep pace with Northern Illinois? Second down and six. Play clock down to seven. Hand off to White, gets stuffed in the backfield. Nabal Jefferson. A loss of two on the play. Northern Illinois' defensive front so active, and they're playing on Eastern Michigan's side of the line of scrimmage. And really, Andrew Sorgatz, the center, number 72, tried to hold Jefferson, 99, off the ball to no avail. And third and long once again for Eastern Michigan, not the type of situation they want to be in. Eighth stop for a loss in this game for Northern Illinois. Quarterback draw up the middle. Gillette gets the first down. Again, success on third down for Eastern Michigan, but this time with the legs of Alex Gillette. Joe Windsor with a tackle. Well, the two most important downs in that series, first down and third down, had to do with a designated run by the quarterback, Alex Gillette, that time on the quarterback draw. And we talked in the first half about how we were surprised to not see Gillette very well executed up front by Eastern Michigan running the football. And now we're starting to see a few more plays like that. Hand off to Shearer. Get to the outside. Shearer around the corner. Another first down. He gets taken down right at midfield, an 18-yard run. Rashawn Melvin with the tackle. Shearer, number 25, does a good job of bouncing this out. Eastern Michigan gets a hat on a hat. Now it's Huskies trailing Shearer down the sideline. And Eastern Michigan out of a hole here a little bit on offense, right at midfield, mounting a nice little drive here to open up the third quarter. It's Shearer again. 
And Shearer able to cut it back up, picks up three. Victor Jacquez with a tackle. How about this? The first half, Eastern Michigan had 15 rushing yards. On this drive alone, they've got 33. And they seem to be having success with Gillette up the middle and Shearer off tackle to either side. There is a player down for Northern Illinois. It's number 90, Alan Baxter. Well, Northern Illinois can't. That's actually number 90, 98. 98, Frank Buenzi. And this is a deep and talented front seven and front four exactly for Northern Illinois. One of the few freshmen in the lineup as this is a senior laden and red shirt fifth year senior laden roster top to bottom. Second and seven. Hand off to Shearer. Dominic Shearer. Second effort picks up a couple of extra yards up to the 45 yard line. This Northern Illinois team, you look at how many seniors they have. Again, this is right now on the two deep on the rosters, 19, but 13 of them fifth year seniors. Now Dave Doran, who comes over after being the defensive coordinator at the University of Wisconsin, inherited a very experienced group, a bona fide difference maker at quarterback. An ideal way to start off your head coaching tenure. Now the challenge becomes to match it year in and year out. Third and five. Gillette again forced to scramble. On the run, he goes down. Deshaun Durant. Minus 12 on the sack. This defensive front for Northern Illinois so active, and they're able to create pressure. They brought some line stunts underneath. Deshaun Durant, 21, from his safety position involved in the pressure package as Jay Neiman, the defensive coordinator, took a chance and brought some pressure, hoping to get exactly what he came up with. And now it looks like they might have pretty good field position with Eastern Michigan kicking into the wind. Jay Karutz averaging 28 yards per punt into the wind. Tommy Davis. Makes the fair catch at the 25, a 32-yard punt. Chandler Harness, we talked about him as a dual threat with his legs and his arm. He can run it, he can make some throws. They rely on him as a designated runner at times. And then look at him get out in front of Jazz Hopkins here, lead the block downfield down the middle of the field. And then the little pop pass down the seam to number 10, Willie Clark for a 54-yard scoring strike. But really, the only touchdown of the day, and numbers are modest, but very good when it comes to protecting the football. Arnish on first down, taking the shot down the field. Up top, and it's incomplete, looking for Martel Moore. Marcel Rose there on the coverage. Taking that shot with the wind at his back. Martel Moore did not appear to realize that he was a target here. He's looking back to the inside. I think he lost sight of the football. Marcel Rose, 31 on the coverage, and, and that's all you can ask for as a quarterback. Throw it up, get a one-on-one -on -one opportunity to, best, to your best target, have a chance for him to come down with it. You're running that far, you should be a target. <laughs> Hand off to Hopkins. And Hopkins picks up a yard. Brad Orman with the stop, his third tackle of the game. You know, we've talked about Martel Moore, the receiver, and Matt Canada, the offensive coordinator, said, you know, the one thing we don't have here is selfishness at the receiver spot. We've got a lot of guys that contribute. They know their role. They know they're going to get some shots. That's when I told him, well, I've never met a receiver that wasn't wide open on every <laughs> single snap. Look at what has happened to Northern Illinois here today on third down conversions. One of the best in FBS, 0 for 6. Chandler Harnish tucks it, breaks a tackle, doesn't break that tackle. Up to the 30, Brad Orman again there for the stop. And Harnish is furious right now. Yeah. 
think he wants uh, either a late hit or a shot up high. That's not something he's going to get. Ryan near on to punt. And a flag comes out before the punt. A false start against Northern Illinois. False start. Offense, number 30, five-yard penalty, fourth down. It was that great punt earlier by Nero, a 54-yarder with a wind at his back that set up the safety. No, Demarius Reed, number two, he's back, and he's talking with the official behind him about the glare of the sun and making sure that's not mistaken for a fair catch call. Good punt, drives Reed back to the 23. Reed gets dragged down as he crossed the 35. A 51-yard punt, a 14-yard return. Eastern Michigan with the ball when we come back. Insurgents have had to flee into the countryside. High speed pursuit in the With a new 285 horsepower Pentastar V6 engine, it's game over for would-be contenders. The 2012 Jeep Wrangler Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 Edition, the toughest vehicle in the world, any world. Cold excitement meet Rocky Mountain Cold Refreshment. Cross Brewed Towards Light, official beer of the NHL. Little help? You put a lot of effort into creating the perfect evening. So we put a lot of effort into creating the perfect tortilla chip. Introducing Tostitos Artisan Recipes. Made with real ingredients cooked right in, a flavor you can see and taste in every bite. Because when we put in the very best, what you end up with only gets better. Experience Tostitos Artisan Recipes. Here's to the pursuit. The pursuit of better. Faster. Cleaner. Funner. Here's to the pursuit of a Pennzoil Motor. Hi. Michigan State, Eastern Michigan at noon. BCU, Alabama at 930. Sunday on ESPNU. It's a nine-point lead with just over nine to go here in the third quarter. Northern Illinois leading Eastern Michigan. Justin Kutcher alongside Tom Luganville here in DeKalb, Illinois. Eastern Michigan trying to come back and upset Northern Illinois here today. And with a win, they would become bowl eligible for the first time since 1995. On first down, the handoff to Javante Green. And Green able to dance forward up to the 40, picks up three. Frank Buenzi makes a tackle. We saw Buenzi lead the field before after getting injured. Good to see him back out there. Now, Eastern Michigan has got to start capitalizing on some of the stops that their defense has afforded them to get back on the field. And they haven't been able to sustain drives or create any type of big plays. Obviously, as you see here, uh, only three points to show for the game so far. Some missed opportunities in that first half for Eastern Michigan. Play clock is winding down. Now down to eight seconds on the play clock. Hand off, Dominique Shearer. And Shearer will pick up another couple yards. Rashawn Melvin with his third tackle of the game. This Eastern Michigan team, six and five, four and three in the back. As six wins has guaranteed them at least a 500 season, snapping 15 straight losing seasons. Third and six, Gillette tried to go up the middle, 
gets a block, gets the first down. Across midfield, up to the 49 of Northern Illinois, a run of nine yards. Well, he can he can thank Dominic Shearer, number 25. It's going to come from the left of your screen. He's flaring out, and then he sees his quarterback breaking it to the sideline, and right there does a great job landing that block on Michael Santa Cantarina, number 52, to extend this drive. Another third down conversion for Eastern Michigan. Hand off to Dominique White, trying to bounce the outside. White picks up a yard. Jordan Delegal with the tackle, sets up second down and nine. Here at Husky Stadium in DeKalb, Illinois. It's Eastern Michigan taking on Northern Illinois here in the MAC. Justin Kutcher alongside Tom Luganville. A lot at stake in this game. Eastern Michigan with a win becomes bowl eligible for the first time since 95. And Northern Illinois with a win would win its second straight MAC West Division title in advance of the championship. Play action. Gillette steps up again. And Gillette gets across the 45, up to the 44, four-yard run. Rashawn Melvin, another tackle, his fourth. A very smart, heady play by Gillette there because the one negative with Gillette is he's not very tall. So if there's chaos in front of him and it obstructs his view of the field, don't expect him to throw the football accurately. He's going to tuck it and run it. And that's what they've instructed him to do. Do not throw the ball up for grabs if you can't see clearly what's happening in front of you. Third and five. The fans making some noise again. And now a timeout has been called. Timeout taken by Northern Illinois. Third and five coming up here for the Eastern Michigan Eagles. It's so cool. Users, even if you have antivirus software, your computer could still be infected. Find out instantly with a free comprehensive diagnosis at mycleanpc.com. Some good games coming up tomorrow here on ESPNU. James Madison against Eastern Kentucky. Tom Luganville, I know we'll be watching that one. Vanderbilt, Wake Forest, big implications for the Commodores. And of course, the rivalry Ole Miss against Mississippi State. How much you want to bet there won't be very many penalties in that 3.30 matchup? Quite a few smart guys. 12 to 3. Northern Illinois leading Eastern Michigan. Before break, we heard the crowd boo before the timeout, and you're wondering, what are they booing about? This is a big play coming up. Well, here's what they're booing about. Listen. The referee, Ron Snodgrass, said timeout Northern Iowa, then correct, quickly corrected himself, said Northern Illinois, <laughs> and the fans were not happy about that. Third and five. Eastern Michigan, five for 11 on third downs in this game. Gillette back to pass. Over the middle, complete. First down to Nick Olds. 50% conversion rate on third down for Eastern Michigan. Well, he gets rid of this ball, Gillette, right before number 90. Allen Baxter's applying the pressure. Nick Olds, number 80, does a good job securing the ball right there in the zone, settling in the soft spot, falling forward, and again, on third down, extending the drive for Eastern Michigan. On first down, handoff to Shearer. And Shearer rolls over up to the 30-yard line, a pickup of four, Sean Progar with his second tackle of the game. And that was a touchdown saving tackle because if he doesn't make that tackle, Dominic Shearer, number 25, hits the crease and he's going. But second and five now, right where Eastern Michigan wants to be offensively in a down and distance situation. Look at Sean Progar, number 95. You see the crease right here. He makes that tackle. If he doesn't make the tackle, Shear is off to the races. Shear has been the most effective running back in this game for Eastern Michigan. Gets the handoff again up the middle. It's Shearer keeping those legs churning. And he will. Have enough for the first down, Rashawn Melvin, another tackle. Keep in mind, Eastern Michigan is going against a very stiff wind. They have got to get close 
to the to the end zone here even even if they've got to kick a field goal to give them a makeable situation with this howling wind against their face. Now Dominic White back in at tailback. First and ten. Ball on the 24 of Northern Illinois. White gets a burst of speed up to the 20. He picks up four. Jimmy Ward with his sixth tackle of the game out of the free safety position. Jimmy Ward second on the team in tackles coming into this game at 79. And now with some quick math, he's got 85. These defensive secondary players from Northern Illinois, if you can't tackle, you're not playing here because they haven't had to make a lot of plays in pass coverage today. Second down and six. Gillette design run. Gillette to the outside, down the sideline, and wisely steps out before getting hit by Deshaun Durant. A first down, setting up first and goal. A 12-yard run by Alex Gillette. And Gillette, they run this play into the boundary against a free rusher to the left of your screen. 52 right there, Michael Santa Cantarina. And Gillette navigates it perfectly, well executed up front. And now Eastern Michigan knocking on the door, and Northern Illinois just keeps letting them hang around. First and goal from the eight. Handoff to White. And White drags some defenders forward up to the six yard line, picks up two. Jordan Delegal with his sixth tackle of the game. Remember earlier in this game, Northern Illinois stopped Eastern Michigan after Eastern Michigan had first and goal from the two. They started this one first and goal from the eight. Now it's second and goal from the six. Dominique Shearer in as the running back. Hand off to Shearer. And Shearer's going nowhere. Frank Buenzi with the tackle. Now third and goal. It'll be interesting to see what Eastern Michigan does here because that last down would have been the down to try and come off with some play action pass with as successful a run game as they've had in this series. Three wide receivers in. Third and goal from the six. Gillette throws too high. Intended for Garrett Hoskins, who was wide open. When we've talked missed opportunities for Eastern Michigan all day. And Garrett Hoskins, number 85, was out on the flat. Justin, as you mentioned, they had the perfect what you call rub play, where you have your outside receivers coming in to rub off the inside defender so that Hoskins can get out in the flat. You see that? There's no way in man-to-man -man defense you can avoid that pick, which is essentially what it ends up being, and get out to the flat. Cody Fulkerson from 23 yards out. And he makes this a one-score game. He converts from 23, he converted from 20 earlier. It's 12 to six, NIU leading Eastern Michigan. Tomorrow at noon in FCS first round match.
1-888-261-8823 today for your City Thank You Premier Card. Or visit city.com slash rewards. Diesel's getting some treats, oh, giving some high fives on the sideline. Can't get enough. Such a pretty dog. Look at him. Diesel the dog. He's got a bad wheel, though. He's on IR right now. Trying to recuperate. He's hoping, though, that his Huskies can win this game because with a win or a Toledo loss, they would clinch the MAC West. Toledo with a win today and a Northern Illinois loss, they would clinch the MAC West. We've had Toledo twice. That is a high octane offense. I mean, they are really talented. That is the bubble screen capital of college football, Toledo, Ohio. And Tim Beckman, the head coach there, has got a lot of explosive playmakers. Northern Illinois snuck by them 63 to 60 at Toledo three weeks ago. So Toledo on that last play for Eastern Michigan, not happy with Eastern Michigan's offense. They want that touchdown. As they're hoping for an Eastern Michigan upset here. Mike Yoakum to kick off. Tommy Lee Lewis. Tommy Lee Lewis gets across the 40 and the flag comes in. Mike Yoakum made the tackle, the kicker. A 27 yard return. Holding on the return team, number 17, 10 yard penalty, first down. And see number 17 right in the middle of the frame there again. Hands out wide. It's going to get you caught every time if you don't keep your hands inside. It's Marky Hayes, 5'8 cornerback, Northern Illinois. Now keep this in mind. We've talked about the wind throughout the telecast. Only three points on that drive for Eastern Michigan, but they ate up seven minutes and 18 seconds into the wind. So Eastern Michigan getting the fourth quarter going with the wind here shortly. Jasmine Hopkins in the backfield. On first down, the handoff is to Hopkins. And Hopkins gets across the 26, picks up three. Andy Malumbo with the tackle. It's amazing how much the wind can play a factor. It reminds me growing up watching Giants games at Giants Stadium. And you think about how important it is to have that wind at your back for the fourth quarter. Second and seven. Play action, Harness, the sideline, completes the pass to Martell Moore. Nate Wilson there on the coverage. Well, everything in the passing game for Northern Illinois today, even if it's been play pass, has been short, underneath, controlled routes. They've really tried to only extend a vertical play one time to Martell Moore. Everything's been underneath 10 yards in the passing game for the Huskies. Northern Illinois looking for its first third down conversion of the game. Facing third and one. Harnish will run with it. Gets the first down, breaks free. Chandler Harnish down the sideline. Harnish, touchdown, 68 yards. Jasmine Hopkins, his running back, number 25, who, by the way, Chandler Harness laid a nice block for in the first quarter, reciprocates the favor. Look at number 25, the offset back to the right side of your screen. Great cut block, cut block underneath. And then Chandler Harness, all 220 pounds of him, showing some power and some lower leg drive to finish off the run. And this is exactly what Northern Illinois started doing last week versus Ball State, chopping at the wood throughout the third and the fourth quarter. And now they're going to go for two. And a timeout taken by Northern Illinois, only 10 men on the field. 
A 68 yard touchdown run is a season long by Northern Illinois. Well, you're going to see right here, he's going to come out here and he's going to lay that block right there. 77 is going to pull around and away they go on offense. Chandler Harnish, this is just a quarterback counter, really. Underneath, very well executed. Big 77, Jared Volk. Jazz Hopkins we talked about. The missed tackle by 35, Colin Weingrad for Eastern Michigan. And the results of Northern Illinois touchdown. They had not converted on third down in the game. They were 0 for 7. That's a pretty good way to get your first conversion. Not bad, all right? Sixty-eight yard run by Chandler Harnish. His 11th rushing touchdown of the year. Harnish going up top. And it is incomplete intended for Martel Moore. Marcel Rose there on the coverage. 18 to 6, Northern Illinois now leading over Eastern Michigan. Justin Kutcher alongside Tom Luganville. 12 seconds to go here in the third quarter. You talked about Eastern Michigan taking all that time off the clock. So with 12 seconds left, what do you see now for the fourth quarter? Well, first of all, if you go back to that run play and the touchdown and why it was so important is they got that touchdown with the win. Points in the kicking game may be hard to come by in the fourth quarter because now Northern Illinois will be going against the win. That favors Eastern Michigan, but really what it did ultimately was take away any momentum that Eastern Michigan had gained by sustaining that over seven minute drive and then getting three points off of it. I said on that drive, allowing Eastern Michigan to, to stick around could pose problems for Northern Illinois. So they do a great job of capitalizing on that drive. And of course they do it behind their best player, Chandler Harnish. And don't forget about that missed opportunity again, that drop pass by Garrett Hoskins, which would have been a touchdown for Eastern Michigan. Tyler Weedle will kick off here with Corey Welch and Darius Scott back deep for Eastern Michigan. Darius Scott in the end zone. Another touchback. Looking towards Eastern Michigan, their most effective runner here in the second half. Well, it's really two. Alex Gillette, the quarterback, and Dominique Shearer, number 25. But at some point or, at some point or another, they're going to end up having to come up with some big plays. And I don't think they're going to be able to manufacture those on the ground. Uh, with an 18 to 6 lead now, they're going against the, they're going to end up having the wind at their back, which is a favorable situation for them. Javante Green gets a block, gets the edge, picks up three. Jordan Delegal finally pushed him out. Second down and seven coming up with six seconds to go here in the third quarter. And that will be the final play of this third quarter. The big play comes via the quarterback Chandler Harnish facing a third and one. They were 0 for 7 on third down conversions. Make it 1 for 8. Breaks the tackle, goes 68. And now it's 18 to 6, Northern Illinois. Michigan State, Eastern Michigan at noon. VCU, Alabama at 9.30. Sunday on ESPN. Back here on ESPNU on Black Friday. It is now 18 to 6, Northern Illinois. Look at what Chandler Harnish has done. 224 total yards. Everybody else on both teams combined has 224 total yards. A big play came back in that first half. A 54-yard touchdown pass to Willie Clark. And besides that, it's been a defensive battle. Second down and seven coming up here for Eastern Michigan. 
Ball on their own, 23. Hand off to Shearer, trying to get around. Good containment. Johnny Faustin again there for the stop, a two-yard pickup. Justin Kutcher alongside Tom Luganbill here. Hope everybody enjoyed their Thanksgiving holiday, enjoying this weekend, maybe eating some leftovers right about now. It's just about lunchtime. Have some turkey, some stuffing. Mine's going to come about 7 p.m. this evening. Third and five coming up here for Eastern Michigan. This is when they're at their best on third down. Gillette with the empty backfield. Gillette scrambling around. Buying some time, throws downfield, nearly picked off. Jimmy Ward almost picked it off for Northern Illinois. You see Alex Gillette just trying to make something happen, almost takes a negative play. Michael Santa Catarina, number 52, and Jason Meehan, number 49, applying the pressure. And almost a tremendous play by Jimmy Ward, 15, along the sideline to come down with that ball. Jay Karutz on to punt. Off the side of his foot, not his best effort. And that's with the wind, Justin. That is a big, big problem for Eastern Michigan now on defense. Marked out at the 49 of Northern Illinois. Let's check back in with Dari Noka for an update on that Tulsa-Houston game. Yeah, how about Tulsa with the early lead? Houston trying to stay undefeated. Case Keenum, 20 yards to Charles Sims. Houston now with a 13-10 lead. Keenum has 40 touchdowns to three interceptions on the season. Guys, how about Farmageddon round one? Nebraska, Iowa, Taylor Martinez to Kyler Reed. Huskers leading 10-zip as they are at the half, guys. Farm again. Look at my man, Dari Noka. How about Keith Keenum? 40 touchdowns, three interceptions. I wish that guy would make some better decisions. Yeah. <laughs> Empty backfield. Hopkins. Harnish up the middle. That gap closed quickly. Picks up a yard. Jabbar Westerman there for the tackle. Forty to three. Wow. Touchdowns, interceptions. That is amazing. Amazing. Well, the one thing about that offense at Houston, it's not just a dink and dunk offense. They're throwing the ball downfield, intermediate, deep routes, taking some chances. It's just a, a reflection of his overall accuracy and their playmakers. Second and nine. Harnish. Pitches, and it's a fumble. They're going to say now incomplete. Well, this is going to be real interesting. Unless this ball was tipped, unless this ball was tipped, or he pitched it forward, which may be the case. Let's look at where Chandler Harness pitches it to. It might be a very good call and an accurate call by our line judge right there. Third and nine, Harnish, the draw up the middle, gets hammered as he crosses the 45 up to the 44, picks up six. Brian Pauly lays the wood on him. Eastern Michigan once again on defense, getting it done. You see the quarterback draw, Chandler Harnish coming in, navigating through some traffic, and Brian Pauly. That's Polly saying happy Thanksgiving, Chandler. That's what they call an ear hole. Near on to punt. Demarius Reed, fair catch. Comes up and makes it at the 20. A 24-yard punt into the winds. Eastern Michigan trying to come back with 12.37 to go. The play that changed college football is the next edition in the documentary series SEC Story, and it premieres on December 1st at 11 p.m. on ESPNU. 
The film looks back at the creation and drama of the first SEC football championship game in 1992 between Florida and Alabama. That's SEC storied, the play that changed college football. 11 Eastern on ESPNU. Thursday night. I love the one about Herschel Walker. Yeah, wasn't that great? Uh, so good. And you forget just how incredible he was as a player in college. First down and 10. Gillette dropping back to pass. Comes near side to Nick Olds. With Sean Melvin there with a tackle. More importantly, though, Olds doesn't get out of bounds. Sean Melvin, number 11, doing a great job wrapping up, driving through the ball carrier. That's that's form tackling clinic video. Gillette design quarterback run. And Gillette will pick up the first down with a six yard run. Jordan Delegault there with a touchdown again. Excuse me, with a tackle again. I got ahead of myself. They're looking for the touchdown. The drought here for Eastern Michigan. Wow. Against Northern Illinois. Gillette looking for some blockers patiently. Up to the 39, picks up six more. Pat Schiller there with a tackle. You think about the last three times these teams have played. It was 37-0 in 2008, 50-6 to in 2009, 71-3 to in 2010. That's 158-9 to the last three meetings. Gillette's pass is knocked down at the line by Ron Newcomb. That's just great coaching on behalf of Jay Neiman, the defensive coordinator at Northern Illinois. He knows that they're going to go with the short, underneath controlled passing game. So let's not rush the passer. Let's come off the ball, spy the quarterback, and get our hands up. Remember, Alex Gillette is short. Doesn't see the field great. You're not going to get a high release point. Very well executed, timed up, knew what was coming, and got it done on defense. Third and four. 11.23 to go here in the fourth quarter. Here comes the blitz. Gillette buying some time. Throws, completes the pass to Garrett Hoskins. And Hoskins is right on that first down line. He's banged up again, Justin. This is the second time we've now seen him down on the ground in this contest. It does look like they are giving Eastern Michigan the first down. Garrett Hoskins, the 6'2", 250-pound junior tight end, makes the catch. We'll get an update on him when we come back. You. Yo. I'm on my way. Experience your sound like never before. The HTC Resound with Beats Audio built in. Let the pros at Best Buy hook you up today. 18-6, Northern Illinois leads Eastern Michigan. Another third down conversion for the Eagles. Yeah, Garrick Hoskins is right here. He's going to come off and delay here and then come across here on the underneath cross route. Gillette's going to come out here, roll out to him. Off of the inside pressure, make a throw at the last second. And it's very difficult to see where an injury might have occurred. He, but when he hit the ground, he, he was struggling to move and, and maintain his composure. Garrett Hoskins, when he went down earlier in this game, Tyrese Russell came in, number 88, and made a great catch. Tyrese Russell is in the game right now. Gillette comes near side to Nick Olds. And Olds gets up to the 50, picks up seven. Johnny Fauston with his sixth tackle of the game. Second down and three coming up here for Eastern Michigan. Approaching 10 and a half to go in the fourth quarter. Thank you. 
Dominique White in the backfield. Gillette going down the sideline. And it's incomplete. The pass intended for Tyler Allen, Rashawn Melvin there on the coverage. Now, why is this game so important for Eastern Michigan? Well, they would become bowl eligible for the first time since 95, but their last bowl game appearance was 1987, the California Bowl. The third longest drought in FBS. Against San Jose State, the California Raisin Bowl, they used to call it. Third and three. Javante Green in the backfield. Gillette taking a shot down the field to Hoskins, and he can't hang on. Are you kidding me? Wow. Garrett Hoskins, who went down with the injury back on the field, was wide open. A tremendous composure in the pocket by Alex Gillette. And he has a touchdown strike served up and ready to go for Garrett Hoskins, number 85, who had broken free of coverage and can't handle the football. So now Jay Karut's on to punt. But a flag comes out, false start first. False start, offense, number 30. The offensive team never got set after breaking the huddle. Five yard penalty, fourth down. Each of the last two drives, Justin, for Eastern Michigan on offense should have been 14 points. You had the overthrown touchdown to Hoskins in the flat on the previous drive, and now the missed or the dropped ball by Hoskins on this drive. Fair catch. Tommy Davis at the 13. A 42-yard punt. It very easily could have been 18 to 13. Instead, it's 18 to 6 right now in Northern Illinois. Exciting doubleheaders from the Big Ten ACC. Go online and order right now. It is a 12-point ball game in favor of Northern Illinois, but really Eastern Michigan has had opportunity after opportunity to put points on the board. Yeah, they've been inside the red area, inside the five twice now. See this in the first quarter, had to settle for three points and then stuffed once again in the run. Here at the end of the third quarter, they overthrow a pass to a wide open Hoskins in the flat, which would have been a touchdown. And then on the previous series right here, a missed opportunity and what would have been a drop, what was a dropped touchdown pass. That's 14 points left off the board. Northern Illinois back on offense. Jordan Lynch is now in at quarterback for Northern Illinois. The back of quarterback, another good runner. And on the first down, he tries to run, and he just gets back to the line of scrimmage. Let's check back in with Dari Noka in the studio for an update. All right, guys, how about Louisville? If they win today at South Florida, they will win at least a share of the Big East title. Terry, Teddy Bridgewater to Devontae Parker, second connection of the day, and the Cardinals, the Cardinals take the lead, 27-24, over on ESPN2. Try to share the Big East with five other teams. First pass is incomplete to Deron Brown from Jordan Lynch. Jordan Lynch, a 6'1", 220-pound sophomore out of Chicago. Well, that was short-lived. He's out. <laughs> and now Chandler Harnish is in. When we asked offensive coordinator Matt Canada about the backup quarterback position, and they're very high on Lynch. They actually stayed. He's a better runner than Chandler Harnish. So they're excited about the prospects of him taking over the offense next year. Third and ten. Akeem Daniels in the backfield with Chandler Harnish. Harnish. 
Looks and gets it out to Daniels. Good tackle by Marcel Rose. And a good defensive series for Eastern Michigan. A quick three and out. And again, a punt now into a stiff win could provide tremendous field goal up excuse me field position opportunities here for this Eastern Michigan offense. Demarius Reed is standing at midfield. Ryan Near will punt by his own goal line into this wind. Reed, fair catch, called for at the 46. Feast Week presented by Lowe's continues later today with two games here on ESPNU. First, from the Old Spice Classic in Orlando at 2.30 Eastern, it's Texas Tech against DePaul. And at 5 Eastern, Boston College takes on UC Riverside in the 76th Classic in Anaheim, California. Feast Week presented by Lowe's on ESPNU today. Alex Gillette. Try to march this team down the field, 8.33 to go. They've got all three timeouts remaining, and they trail by 12. Dominique White in the backfield. First down, handoff is to White. Gets across midfield up to the 49 of Northern Illinois. Picks up five, Sean Progard there with his third tackle of the game. Well, it's about to become that time of the game where running the football is no longer going to be an option. They're going to have to come up with some big plays, whether it's by moving the pocket with Alex Gillette and creating some things in the passing game. Gillette runs the ball. Gillette picks up the first down. And, Tom, it's also getting to that point in the game where field goals aren't going to help you. No. You need touchdowns, so every, every series is a four-down territory. It certainly is, and now they're starting to pick up the pace a little bit offensively. Gillette's pass towards the sideline is complete to Nick Olds. Complete, but also in bounds, and that's the second time we've seen a pass to Nick Olds, number 80 there. Unable to get up out of bounds along the sideline as the clock continues to roll. Under seven and a half to go here in the fourth. Gillette steps up. And that is incomplete. Was looking for Nick Olds. For Sean Melvin there on the coverage. Sean Melvin, number 11, has been all over these Eastern Michigan wide receivers. Outside of the wide open busted coverage on the last series and the miss to Garrett Hoskins big 85 there have been no open Eagles here today. Third and six. Good numbers by Eastern Michigan on third down here today. Javante Green in the backfield. Gillette rolling out to his left. Gillette able to get the first down and get out of bounds. To Alex this, Gillette picks up 13. To this point, that's been the play of the game. That keeps a minute right here. Again, a lot of avoided pressure up front. Keeps his eyes downfield. Does the smart, wise thing. Tucks the football and then gets out of bounds to stop the clock. And the clock starts on the ready. Gillette again, nowhere to go this time. Jordan Delegal with his 10th tackle of the game. Thirteen carries, 63 yards for Alex Gillette. Gillette, touchdown, Nichols! 24-yard touchdown pass. Great adjustment by Olds.
This is just a matter of the defender losing track of the football with his back to the quarterback. And normally you want that back shoulder throw to the outside shoulder, but this time it doesn't matter. There's no safety help over the top. Olds comes inside and makes the play for 24 yards. And that's the first touchdown for Eastern Michigan against Northern Illinois in a long, long time. 2007. They're going for two here, and I don't quite understand this. I'm not quite sure why they're going for two here either. Javante Green cuts it back, and Green doesn't get it. A touchdown, but no two-point conversion. 18 to 12. Northern Illinois leads Eastern Michigan. Hey, where you been? Coverage of college football continues tomorrow afternoon at noon Eastern as James Madison takes on Eastern Kentucky in the first round of the NCAA FCS Championship presented by Enterprise Rent-A-Car. College football on ESPNU tomorrow. Eastern Kentucky there, Eastern Michigan here, and Tom Luganville. I'm still kind of puzzled as to why Eastern Michigan went for two on that last play. As am I. I mean, if they kick the extra point, they're down by five. Even if Northern Illinois kicks a field goal, it's still an eight-point game. Now you don't get it. They kick a field goal. you got to score twice if you're Eastern Michigan. An intriguing call at the time. Mike Yoakum will kick off. Tommy Lee Lewis, Tommy Davis standing at their own ten. Tommy Lee Lewis will take a knee. A big matchup here in the Mac West with a win. Northern Illinois wins the Mac West. So they control their own destiny. Eastern Michigan with a win would become bowl eligible for the first time since 1995. You know Toledo's watching this game, pulling hard for the Eagles right now. Pulling really hard for the Eagles. Wishing they saw an extra point on that last yeah. touchdown. <laughs> Jasmine Hopkins in the backfield here. The last series was a three and out for Northern Illinois. Harnish will keep it. Trying to get to the outside. Nice tackle. Nate Wilson brings down Harnish. Northern Illinois has 93 yards this half, but 68 of them came on the touchdown run by Harnish. Well, Eastern Michigan's played great defense, and Harnish does a good job getting to the outside, and I believe he would have gone down voluntarily as Nate Wilson, 28, makes the tackle for Eastern Michigan, but Harnish is smart and savvy enough to realize the moment and to stay in bounds. Second down and nine. Harnish back to pass, and that's incomplete for Martel Moore, so that stops the clock there, and now sets up third and nine. Yeah, Chandler Harnish didn't like how that ball came out of his hand, and wasn't well thrown, stops the clock, puts him in a third and long situation, kind of setting the table for Eastern Michigan here. If they can hold on defense, which they've done a remarkable job of all game long, the third downs have been really good defensively for Eastern Michigan. Huge, huge third down right now. Harnish has an opening. Harnish gets the first down. Second, third down conversion of the game. Both of them have come on runs by Chandler Harnish. And once again, Jazz Hopkins, 25, the back to the right. Great block at the point of attack right there on Brad Orman, number 93. Harnish does the rest, secures the football in a crowd, moves the chains, and then most importantly, keeps this clock running by remaining in bounds. And now they'll take time off the clock. Let that play clock Wind down. Go, 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 
Hopkins on the handoff cuts it back gets forward across the 35 up to the 36 picks up for Andy Malumba on the tackle Jazz Hopkins a senior you see his awareness of the situation could have easily stretched that play to the sideline but no he takes one cut gets up field ensuring that he gets tackled inbounds got to understand the moment with veteran players in these types of situation of how to get that clock to work in your favor when you have the football in your possession. Second down and six coming up. Akeem Daniels comes in for Jasmine Hopkins. Handoff to Daniels. And Daniels gets tackled by Nate Wilson. Third and five coming up. Approaching four minutes to go. Eastern Michigan has all three of its timeouts remaining. The only times that Northern Illinois has converted on third down, it's been Harnish on a run. Do you just focus in on Harnish here? Well, he's got to be the focal point of your defensive design because he's the guy that makes this Northern Illinois offense go. He passes incomplete behind Akeem Daniels. Now comes the punt unit for Northern Illinois, again punting into the wind with 341. Not only does it bring up a punt, but with the pass incomplete, the clock stops. Clock stops, no question. And you're punting into a stiff wind which could provide some great field position for Eastern Michigan. Demarius Reed. The punt return specialist, the Mac West Special Teams Player of the Week. After an 83-yard punt return last week for a touchdown against Kent State. Fair catch called for and made. The one thing is with kicking into that wind, the coverage gets down there, doesn't allow for a return. 32-yard punt, so here comes Eastern Michigan now with 3.33 to go. All three of their timeouts remaining. And they will start at their own 32-yard line. Trying to become bowl eligible, as we talked about. You see the last bowl appearance there. You may say, well, they've got six wins, but they have two FCS-level opponents. So that means they've got to get a seventh win to get bowl eligible. Now we're going to see if they got enough playmakers to move this ball through the air. On first down, Gillette will run it. Gillette cuts it back. Alex Gillette comes towards the near sideline. Alex Gillette across the 45 up to the 42 of Northern Illinois, a 26-yard run. See Eastern Michigan here with a bit of a sense of urgency. This is just a design quarterback run. He sees the cutback, exploits it, gets as wide as he can, keeps his vision inside. It's Gillette again on the keeper. And Gillette picks up four, tackled by Jimmy Ward. I gotta say, I'm impressed with Eastern Michigan's ability to run the ball at will here at a critical time where you would think Northern Illinois is gonna do everything they can to force Eastern Michigan to put the ball in the air, which does not place Eastern Michigan in their comfort zone. Plenty of time here for Eastern Michigan. Gillette pass complete far side to Trey Hunter. And with that spot, that'll be a first down. Ron English in his third year as the head coach. This is a nice five yard speed cut out. Quick throw out to the sideline. Pitch and catch. Trey Hunter, number 84. Gillette in the shotgun with White. Forced out again. Taking the shot down the field. And there is no pass interference. Intended receiver is a tight end, Tyrese Russell. Deshaun Durant on the coverage. The ball was well overthrown. 
Ball's uncatchable outside of the back of the end zone. Second down and 10. Gillette just grabbed Russell, threw him to the other side of the field. Gillette cannot escape that one. Sean Progar and Alan Baxter. Baxter brings him down for a sack and a loss of 15. Well, you just you can't do that. You've got Baxter here on the left side of your frame. They're going to come in here. They've got pressure set up. They've got the call right. They've got themselves a screen call that is the perfect setup, but they can't get the football off. Tremendous execution for Northern Illinois along the defensive front to have awareness to track the screen, yet still be able to apply the pressure. And if you're Alex Gillette, the Eastern Michigan quarterback right there, you can't take that sack. You've got to get that ball out of your hands. All right, so now you're Eastern Michigan facing third and 25. Obviously, it's four down territory. So what's your strategy here out of the timeout? What are you trying to do here on third down? Well, you're going to try and get at least half of it back, preferably get out of bounds if you can, so you don't have to burn another timeout. But I, I think you've got to be very careful with what you do. I don't think you get too greedy. You realize you've got two downs. But uh, you've only got a, a certain select set of plays on your play sheet anyway for this type of situation. So it's more about where you're going to be in terms of getting out of bounds as much as it is about gaining the yard. Dominique White in the backfield. This crowd of more than 13,000 on their feet. Gillette scrambling again. Gillette keeps it alive. Now he gets shipped up from behind. Sean Progar with his second sack. Sean Progar. He's been active and all over the place. To see him right in here, very active. You're going to see some pressure, blitz, blitz off the edge. They're going to really get after. See the cross stunt right there with 95. He comes inside. They get after Alex Gillette. Five man pressure, and Gillette almost pulls a rabbit out of a hat. But what an explosive and active group of senior laden front seven players for Northern Illinois. Sean Progar. Had a safety earlier in this game, and now maybe a season saving play. Because it's now fourth and 35 for Eastern Michigan. With a win here, Northern Illinois clinches the MAC West Division title. You know, this is where if you, you have a hook and lateral, you have something that you can play with. Try and create a little razzle dazzle to give you a chance because in your play sheet, up in the booth, you don't have a call for fourth and 35. Gillette steps up over the middle, up top, and it's incomplete. Oh, oh. Hoskins almost pulled it down, would have been a first down. Oh, Sean oh. Evans was there. Wow. Who says you don't have a play for fourth and 35? <laughs> you know, Alex Gillette does a good job here. He made, they get the same stun underneath with Progar 95 coming up the middle in the A-gap. Gillette avoids him and, and really just gives his intended target, Hoskins, a chance. Number 85, Sean Evans, number two, Northern Illinois on the defense. But that's all you can ask for is give your guy a chance when the ball is thrown up in the air. And that man's obviously not feeling as good as he'd like to be, having dropped a Eastern Michigan touchdown earlier in the fourth quarter. Harnish takes a knee. 
And now the whistle was blown earlier. He never went down. Chandler Harness was trying to take more time off the clock. Dave Doran saying, why the whistle? And a timeout taken here by Eastern Michigan. So Northern Illinois in a close one here. The Ohio Bobcats. Tyler Tettleton, a good quarterback, another dual threat guy. They've got a good rushing attack. We're going to advance Northern Illinois to that MAC championship to face Ohio. So with the win here versus Eastern Michigan. Facing Frank Solch's Bobcats. He's done a great job in this conference. Great job resurrecting the Ohio program. Took a little bit of a lull there after Jim Grove had left Ohio to go down to Wake Forest. And Coach Solch has brought it back. Tyler Tettleton, a pretty exciting young player, quarterback for Ohio. The son of former all-star catcher in baseball, Mickey Tettleton. And Harness takes the knee there. Well, I'd tell you what, I think if you polled a lot of people here, 18 to 12 is not the score they envisioned. Well, it hasn't been reflective of what we've seen in the <laughs> MAC over the last three to four weeks, that's for sure. It was a defensive battle, and you know what? Uh, Eastern Michigan and Ron English uh, deserve a lot of credit for where he's gotten this program to in just his third year. I know he's certainly not happy, as they would have loved to have been able to secure a seventh win and become bowl eligible, but they've had 15 consecutive losing seasons until now, and now Dave Doran comes in, takes over for Jerry Kill, wins the MAC West division outright, We'll be heading to Detroit for the MAC championship in his first year as the head coach here at Northern Illinois. Handshakes. Northern Illinois, the 2011 MAC West Division champs for the second straight time, heading back to Detroit. A hard fought game by both teams. Our final score Northern Illinois 18, Eastern Michigan 12. Coming up next at Sports Center U. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Tom Luganbilt and our entire crew, I am Justin Kutcher saying happy Thanksgiving. Goodbye from Illinois. We'll actually be back here in a couple minutes to talk to some of the stars of this game. But for right now, let's throw it to Darinoka in the studio. We'll see you in a couple minutes. All right, that you will. We will get you right back out there. In the meantime, you get us, Jason Seahorn, former USC Trojan. Lorenzo White and Tim Brown, the two Heisman hopefuls. It's been Tim Brown and the Irish tonight. Well, I think George will go back. He's not going to see Tim Brown every week. And I think what George do, he'll go back, tell his defense they did a good job, needs a little work on the offense, do a little bit better job on the specialty. But every week.